Welcome to Brothers of the Serpent Podcast. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is episode 23 of Brothers of the Serpent Podcast. Coming to you live, not live, for the 10 by 10 by 10 Tangent Cube of Science. And uh, we have a a new addition to the highly overrated, non-existent previous to this staff. <laughs> so it's really the first addition to this. Oh, I mean, Kyle and I are obviously the first staff members, technically. Um, but you know, when you're the guy, when you're the guys doing the show, and there's no one else doing anything else around you, you don't have staff. But now we do. Yeah. So we have uh, we have our friend Brett, and we've been talking about this since almost since the since we first started the show that we wanted to do this, and we've just now sort of been getting the logistics correct yeah. and everything. Yeah, Brett started out by officially observing every topic of the show and listening to every word and sending us endless amounts of text messages yeah. about every topic. So we decided that he was the official show observer, right? And that he needed uh, to do it live. Yeah. Instead of because he was he was commenting and correcting us yeah. <laughs> days late, you know. <laughs> then he tried to die at the beginning of May, <laughs> but uh, but That's he's right. back. That's right. I forgot about that. He he freaking uh, he decided to go die for a little bit. Had something like w- was it walking pneumonia or something you had? Yeah. So anyway, he's he's on. We can hear him in our headphones. Yeah. Uh, but you can't hear him. So when. We get something wrong, which happens pretty much all the time. Yeah, uh, he will either chime in with a with a comment to correct us, and we'll hear him in our headphones. You won't hear him. So if we if we stop talking for a moment, most likely it's because we're listening to something Brett's saying. Uh, right. We're going to try to make that as smooth as possible. Um, right. The mission statement for Brett's job is to take the standards of this show from getting everything all, almost everything wrong to getting. Sort of most everything wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's going to be a really hard job. Yeah. So we're, we're trying this out. We did this last episode and it worked for already. Us. People have noticed that we just would stop and they're checking their like, wait, did something? Did hey, oh, hey, amateur big mistake. You left your amateur wrong. and your flashlight. My flashlight's good. It's not making noise. <laughs> no, it's making extremely high frequency noise. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. We're going to try to cut down on the um, the lengthy silences while listening to Brett droll on and on and on, <laughs> correcting us. <laughs> An endless list of corrections. It's like when you type something, you type up a paper and then you run, you run the, uh, the spell checker and it's just like red squiggly lines all over everything. <laughs> Got to just rewrite the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to start the timer like a... <sighs> Oh, great. Come on, Brett. Why didn't you remind Wait, me? Wait, that means the... like we're in some kind of weird time warp. Zero seconds. Yeah. There it goes. Okay. Anyway. So the show just started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, folks. Brothers of the Serpent <laughs> right. podcast. 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 by 10. And snakes. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the deal, man? Well, uh, we, we had the request to talk about, um, like, just kind of go over the whole thing of life of lifetimes and life expectancies and oh yeah like yeah yeah so i think we should do we should do some of that and uh i know brett will be able to chime in on this because he he's like almost a doctor he's one of those guys <laughs> he's got like a <laughs> mostly a medical degree and uh so he knows about this kind of shit genetics and you care you carry how do you say it it's is it eukaryotic cells how do you say that yeah yeah, yeah eukaryotic cells yeah so um the, the request basically was like you know what is the deal with how long things live you know, more specifically towards humans, but it just in general, like why do things age and die? Like what is the mechanism of that? And, uh, you know, and then also like, wh- is it changing for humans? Is it, is, is stuff getting different? Yeah. Um, so as far as I know, there are like, when you go to, when you go all the way down to like single celled uh, animals or whatever, whatever you would call them, single celled life forms, they, there are ones that don't have, that don't really have a, they don't have a nucleus. They don't have their they don't have their DNA wrapped up in a nucleus. They just have plasmids that can swap with each other, <laughs> and they don't have telomeres on the ends of their uh, on the ends of their their the the DNA chains. So when you reproduce, you gotta you gotta duplicate this DNA, right? Yeah. You, so uh, telomeres are pieces of that 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 every time you reproduce, 
that every time they duplicate, you lose that, you lose a piece of it. It gets shorter. And so basically like that's what causes the aging process is like eventually when your telomeres run, run low, they, you, the, the duplication process then has errors in it. Right. Okay. So you, then there's a degradation after that, but like that's eukaryotic cells. Okay. Which is actually considered to be an advanced, an advancement over the, the non eukaryotic, non telomere carrying cells that are functionally immortal and can, and can duplicate themselves indefinitely. Which is a strange thing, kind of like it's like, well, how come something that's immortal is less advanced? But if you if you think about it, something that is uh, something that's that's that reproduces like this, and uh, and then has to reproduce a bunch of times, and then it will fail in various ways, versus something that can just reproduce endlessly, and it doesn't really matter. There's not there's no protections or changes. That thing doesn't change. It doesn't evolve. Huh. Okay. So. Lifespans and li the like the sort of degenerational cycle is a big like so if you think of just think of some like uh, like the Anunnaki if they're if you know if they're really real and they they live for hundreds of thousands of years uh, presumably they would they can have children but it's going their their generations are going to be much longer than humans right. so every Anunnaki generation of let's say it's a hundred thousand years there are going to there are going to be tens of thousands of human generations inside of that single Anunnaki generation. So if if the reproduction cycle, if the reproduction, the, the combining of genes from two different members of that species yeah. is what causes new things to take place, new and interesting, uh, you know, arrangements of the DNA and, the, and everything, like humans have the, have 10,000 times to, chances to advance yeah. for every Anunnaki one. But, okay, well, what's the deal about, like, the chromosomes? Because I, I remember learning something about like way, way back the, the, the gene pool or whatever, yeah. uh, was like each person had way more stuff. Oh, okay. Like, well, there's, and so like the more we reproduce, like it gets thinner and thinner or something. Oh, okay. Uh, well, th th wouldn't that be going the other direction? Uh, chromosomes are, I th aren't those RNA? I'm not sure. Um, they're, they're like the, they're, they're, the, the chromosomes are, are not necessarily part of the, the nucleotic DNA. Okay. Okay. That, I, I just, yeah, I really don't know much about this. Yeah. yeah let's what, hear, let's hear deal, Brett. Tell me, Brett. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was doing, asking you questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. 22 pairs. Specific to reproduction. Yeah. And it splits and forms two half pairs. Splits, forms two half pairs. Right, but okay, but the but the question the question is is like like what is the that is that those chromosomes are contained within the 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 full strand of of nucleic DNA? Okay. So what are the what is the mitochondrial stuff then? The mitochondrial comes only from the mother. Right, but where is it where is it contained? It comes from the mother, but it's Okay, that's right. So it's not in the nucleus, no. right? <clears throat> okay, so and then the I, I basically got the stuff about the telomeres, right? Is that correct? It's kind of functionally correct. Right. Yeah. Mutation. Right. Yeah. So, and then the non -eukary eukaryotic cells, they don't have a nucleus, right? And they they can reproduce endlessly, and, and they're functionally immortal, basically. But uh, prokaryotic cells is what he what he was saying. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so they have a single chromosome like DNA, and then yeah, so they can just reproduce. It's like a, a doesn't require um, fertilization. It's just there's just duplication, right? They just split. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> so what's like? I've heard this this thing, you know, on various news stories or whatever about people looking for um, some type of genetic manipulation that would that would allow us to be immortal or live forever or whatever, that, that type of right. thing. Like how, so, so they're, they're dealing specifically with these telomeres, like trying to figure out how to make them well, not. I, yeah. They're, they're, for a while off. they were, for a while they were really excited that, that, because when you see the telomeres being the limiter in terms of, in terms of being able to do, to reproduce without mutations, without errors coming up, up in the code, if you can lengthen the telomeres, yeah, if you could do some you, process that would lengthen them, yeah, then you, you could, could you technically could, you could do it over and over. Right. If you could continue to add to the telomeres, but I don't know. If, uh, yeah, I don't know enough about it to say 
if that research has gone anywhere. I mean, you know, we could have immortals already living among us. <laughs> yeah, but I, I've, I've read and I can't say, you know, how many stories, but but multiple different stories over, you know, the past few years where they're like new discoveries, you know, leading yeah. to, you know, extending human life or possible. Right. Like, but they're they're almost I, whenever I read those, I, they're, they're never talking about that part. It's, they're talking about other stuff like the, I mean, in specifically with DNA, something oh, okay. about DNA. Hmm. Uh, but but I, you know, yeah, I'm not really giving you enough information here. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> that's cool. I mean, we just want to kind of patch <clears throat> over the whole subject. So like that's I just found it interesting that the what is considered to be the more primitive life forms, these these uh, uh, prokaryotic cells, which are basically like bacteria. They don't have a nucleus. They don't have a nucleus with their DNA in there. They're functionally immortal, you know, a, a, a if they aren't killed by something like whatever, like fire, or, you know, right? If they don't die of natural causes, <laughs> if they don't die by, if they don't die from environmental causes, <laughs> yeah, environmental causes, yeah, uh, they can live forever, and that's considered to be less <clears throat> less developed than the eukaryotic cells, which are not. They have a, a lifespan. That's interesting. Yeah, it must be it must be structure based because the, the the eukaryotic cells are, are a lot more complex. And their internal structure. Anyway, uh, I always I always go back to that when I'm when I'm thinking about um, lifespans because this this sort of is the grounding for all of the rest of it. Yeah. So our all of our bodies, every you know, the bodies of every single living thing on this earth that has more than one cell in it is made of made of eukaryotic cells, as far as I know. So only the single celled bacteria stuff is is non is prokaryotic or whatever they call it. So if there's ways to Sweet. I was just told that I got that 100% correct. So I'm going to have to spend the rest of the show getting everything wrong in order to maintain the standards here. Uh, uh, so, uh, okay, in terms of the question of like in the past as opposed to now, what are the lifespans of, of humans like? Well, that depends on what your sources are. Uh, if, you, if you look at the ancient texts, uh, we actually live a lot shorter lives than they did in the ancient past. But right. nobody, you know, no, no scientist worth his, his, his diploma believes that shit. So they think that we're extending human life. But it's, it's usually not as much as people think because there's this, there's this common conception that like the average lifespan of, the, of primitive man was 30 years or whatever. Right. But that's, that's – that's a true statistic, in, but in the sense that it's also like completely gives you a false picture because that includes the infant mortality rate, which is horrendously high every, at every point in human history except for right now. Um, so if you remove the infant mortality rate, then people's average lifespans, in other words, people who survive past infancy, okay, lived an average of 70-something years, even in the ancient past. Yeah. So, but also the the problem with that statistic, and and this is this is sort of like the problem with all statistical things. Is that ninety nine percent of them are made up on the spot. Well, no, it's just it's <laughs> it's that the, they have to pick a time period and an area to 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 make the statistics yeah. from. So so if like if you start with the standard model, which is that there was no advanced civilization right prior to ours now. They, you know, that, that it's been a linear development. Yeah. And so you're studying some, uh, say, tribal group, you know, from, you know, thousands of years ago. There's some, you know, guys running around in butt flaps. Uh, then, and you, you know, their, their mortality rate is somewhere in the, or not rate, but uh, the life expectancy is somewhere in the 30s. Uh, and then you assume that something, <clears throat> uh, another group of people, Three thousand years before that, six thousand years ago, were roughly the same yeah. technological development. Blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so we're not really looking at like a specific culture. Say, like the 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 people who built the pyramids, because nobody knows really who did right. it. Yeah. But if you're if you're studying a butt flap culture that was around the pyramids, yeah, three thousand years ago. It, it may be that they they were dying, you know, younger, right? Because they didn't have the the modern technology, like like the technology that we have, right? But the the thing is that's 
that's interesting about this whole concept, though, is that really where our medical technology mm. is doing its, the most of its work is at the very beginning and at the very end of life. It, right. 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 So we have we have not completely, but largely eliminated the the horrendous infant mortality rate problem, which is just it isn't. I mean, it's horrendous to us because of it's just terrible to think of all that, you know, like right. that, that it's like, I don't know, something like seven out of 10 babies died in right. infancy. In, in one in one way or another, they would call him like little visitor, right? For the, for first, the first two years, of years, yeah. yeah, yeah, just call him the little stranger, the visitor, or whatever, because it, you didn't even want to give him a name and personalize him and fall in love with him because you, they probably weren't going to survive. So our medical technology has solved that in the modern Western world. It hasn't solved it everywhere, yeah. everywhere. Um, and then at the end of life care, most people. There, there are, are large numbers of people in, in Western civilizations that live 10, maybe 15 years longer than they would have. That entire time, they're, they are like under massive uh, medical care because they're, right. they're basically we're, – we're trying to keep them alive uh, through things that would just normally take them out a couple of weeks or right. months or whatever, which is great. But that's where, that's where all of our technology is focused in terms of medical stuff, in terms of increasing lifespans. So we're – we, or, on the, on the infant end, of it anyway. on the infant end, we're not adding lifespan. We're just increasing the number of people who can live. Right. Uh, so, like I said, because like if you correct for the infant mortality rate, and all throughout the ancient past, as far as we know, any any place where we can get, you know, some kind of enough enough information to have to, to do statistics, where you've got large numbers of burials or whatever, right? Right. So. Any place in the ancient past where we've been able to do that, we can see that there are, that the, the the average like lifespan of an adult, okay, somebody who reaches adulthood, is like seventy years, seventy two years. But still, how are how are they? What are they basing that on when when they when they? You can tell how old the skeleton is, basically. Hmm. That well, that's what they say. Okay, right. That's what I'm. That's what I'm asking. Like, what if? So let's say like, well, this guy, you know, died in his his sixties. Are they basing that on on Things in the body or in the skeleton that are common with sixty-year-olds now, because what if those people back yeah, that then is, that is a question yeah. became physically like they were sixty now when they were freaking three hundred years old? Right. Yeah. That is, that's that. Th so the any com any comparison has to be made with a per with a modern person. So it is a comparison. Like because yeah. I, I saw people were saying, well, like isn't there some kind of test that can determine the 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 absolute age of something? You know. So like because. I, you have people coming and cl claiming to be an age that they're not. You know, the guy says he's 15, but he's probably 28. Okay. So how do you figure that out? Can you do some kind of comparison? Well, yeah, but only if you're comparing him to like known 15 and 28 year olds. Right. Uh, and yeah, so if you go, if you do that over large amounts of time, when, especially if you go back pre ice age, the, the environment is so drastically different then it's not really, it may not work. Yeah. So, so in, in a lot of the ancient texts, like people, like in, in, in the biblical texts, like people lived before the flood, you know, hundreds of years. Yeah. Right. It was not uncommon for certain, right. for Noah certain was, noble people or like, you know. Noah high, was 600 something when he was building the ark. Yeah. And then yeah. there, what was the, supposedly like the oldest guy, Methu biblical Methuselah, guy. Methuselah, 900 and something uh, years. Methuselah. I thought it started with an N. It's it's an M, I think. Me, Ma, Methuselah. Methuselah. Uh, it's a weird name. It's like Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> it's just, it always struck me as a strange name. <laughs> um, yeah, Methuselah was like this. He was like the grandson of Enoch or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, he lived like yeah. 900 something years. Yeah. Shut up, Brett. Okay, it's Methuselah. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> somebody, somebody may have translated it to a different name. It was well, like, he's definitely called different names in the different texts. <laughs> yeah, but okay. So then you, then you have like the king's lists that are where they're, those people are like, you know, living tens of thousands of years. Yeah. And that's just, but it's, just, it's also just the king. And they're, when they start talking about bringing kingship down from heaven and stuff, you start wondering like, Maybe just that guy lived that long. Right. Like he's enveloped in this kingship. Whatever. But that was the same, it's sort of the same deal with, with uh, Noah because he was. Right. He was one of the big biblical patriarchs. He was kind of like one of the shining ones or whatever. He, yeah. he, he was born from like his mother, but he, her husband 
knew that it wasn't his. Like yeah. when he came out, he was like all pissed. And then this al- this That's right alien <laughs> angel, this, this alien, <laughs> this angel, you know, comes down and is like, no man, like yeah. You know, that's that that guy God gave her that that right and baby. That's some kind of insemination program, right? It I seems to have know. gone I mean, like that's what it looks like. It seems to have gone on for long they, all the virgin births. You know? That could be another thing, like the the giants idea. Yeah. Like they gave birth to giants. Yep. Maybe they were giants in, in terms of Age. life. Yeah. You yeah. Know? You would just become a you would become a giant if you were several thousand years old. You may not be immense, but you're you're you become a wizard. Your experience would be immense. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I want to live for thousands of years, man. I'm like, I, I, kinda, I want I kind of want to check out what's on. I the other want side to of the already bale. have lived for thousands of years. Now <laughs> I don't want to have to actually go through it. I just want to like already have done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once again, I'm like 35, looking at my past, going. Oh, Jeez. So, okay. So, so Brett's telling us. I screwed this up. (laughs) Brett's telling us, so things we look at to uh, age a skeleton are the presence and deterioration of growth plates, osteoporosis, and how compressed the spine is. Yeah. So that there's. Yeah. That like. But that's comparison to to known cases, modern cases or whatever. Right. To, to modern aging. Yeah. So. Yeah. He says, he says it's right of without, without a frame of reference, it means nothing. So yeah, there is no, there is no test that can like give an absolute age for a person. You can't just test them and like, okay, here, there are things in their body that tell us that this person is 14. You just can't do that. Right. Um, uh, so it is, it's when we, when they look at the past and they're like, well, people, adults live to 70 ish or whatever. They, they seem to be old. Yeah, you're right. Cause like, I, I'm remembering now that the, all the times when they find the skeleton, right. And they talk about the teeth being worn all the way down to the nub. Yeah, which no modern human yeah. even gets close to, because the enamel on the teeth are is the hardest material in the in the human body. Something living long enough to eat, to chew on stuff until they're just worn almost all the way to the jawline is, in other words, they're not, they don't have dental problems. They didn't have cavities. They weren't rotting yeah. out. They just wore them out before yeah, dying. Yeah. That implies because they were chewing boiled leather and leaves. <laughs> yes. Nope. I chew ice every day. <laughs> <laughs> I crunch on. I crunch on ice cubes. <laughs> You know, I should wear my teeth out. Doesn't doesn't even make a mark. So yeah, basically when they're when they're like checking the ages of these uh, you know ancient peoples, they're they're more or less giving a percentage of their life, like what what they okay, consider yeah. their life expectancy. So right. they could say like, whatever oh, its life expectancy is, it's lived through this much. Right, of it. it's about seventy percent through. Like because 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 that comparison is more accurate. Like if if they look at like all of the modern aging yeah. like all of these signs of modern aging and they say like well this person died 70 percent through yeah. his life span which you know maybe would have been if he was 50 or yeah or whatever then they're they're basically saying so it's like when when people take like dog years right, right? <laughs> they're like oh well this dog is like basically 50 in dog years yeah they're doing the same thing right yeah there, there's human years for sure i mean the anunnaki had their Nibiru year. So this is this is cool <laughs> though because like what w- when you talked about um, carbon dating, yeah, and you know they're using this decay rate or whatever, yeah, that that is fairly stable. Like in, in other words, the rate today is pretty stable, right? But we don't know if the rates had changed over time or the rates of incoming material that. Co- that yeah, exactly. With carbon dating is really about the cosmogenic stuff coming in, not the not necessarily the decay rate of. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right. Yeah, um, but that was my point. Is right, that like, yeah. Like Either one the, of those things. Could the be. different environment in yeah. the past may may throw our our dating off. Exactly. So it, it's it's based on a comparison with what's going on right now. So that's kind of the same way they're doing it. Is like comparing it to to the life expectancy without you know just take years out of it and just yeah. say. Like the full life expectancy of a human is 100 percent of life, right? You know the the length of their life. So. And then, well, I mean the other one. I mean when you're looking at a long head skeleton or or even one of the one of the um, double dentition giant skeletons, like you, yeah, it's 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 a different species. It's a it's a hominid hominin or whatever, but it's it's a different species. So you may not know what the signs of like what look, look what looks like arthritis in the joints to us may be a, a, a strengthening. An adding of leverage. So do they know then, like, th- this makes me ask a question, but how did, 
how do they know or do they know or do they think they know <laughs> the lifespan of, you know, various fossil no, it's just like, guesses. Like dinosaurs. No, it's just guesses. Like, oh, the dinosaur, you know, the Tyrannosaurus Rex lived, yeah, lived 50 years. No, it's just guessing. And it's, again, based on, it's because like really. It's based with, on large animals here today. Right, based on large, which are all mammals mostly. I mean, we have a, you know, we have a few large reptiles, but those are not. Well, the crocodile and the alligator are basically dinosaurs that have survived until now. And can't they live, like, without, like, if they aren't killed, won't they just live, like, extremely long? Yeah, it's it's hard to, I mean, like, like people have, yeah, people have found enormous ones that are just, that must be really, really old. But you can't really tell. Again, you can't cut him up and be like, well, he's 150. <laughs> you just see he's huge, you know. Yes. Yeah, so, there are man, fish, there, crazy, there are dude. fish in the ocean that are, I, I can't say functionally immortal in the same way that bacteria are, but... They will just continue to grow. Yeah. And they just don't, they don't really age. They don't get old and die. Something, but the, but you know, the odds stack up eventually and something's going to eat them. Right. And then that thing will die because of the mercury in their bodies. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Fish eat mercury for breakfast. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, um, and then I, it, it also greatly depends on your environment. Like I was talking about, so there are, there are some ideas about the, the not the climate, but the sort of the envir- the uh, the environment of the surface of the the, the biosurface of the Earth, like the, the lowest layer of atmosphere right next to the surface, which is basically the biosphere. Yeah. What uh, that was, like- <laughs> yeah, it's a complete. It goes all the way around. It's a dome. <laughs> it's two domes. <laughs> biosphere. Uh, what would it be if it was a flat a bio disc? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, there's some ideas about what. What you know, what that, what the the biosphere looked like, or what it was, because we have certain, there are certain things about it today that are that are extremely important that most people don't ever realize. Like the the first one is the magnetosphere. Okay, it's 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 a it's caused by the magnetic, uh, the magnetic field of the Earth, right. which which actually, I mean, it's great for compasses and stuff, you know, or, or sometimes throwing you off because making your compass spin. But really, what it does is it keeps us all from like like deep roasting from radiation from the sun. Right. It just deflects most of it. And that, and it goes, the, that deflected radiation goes into the Van Allen belts, which are why we can't go to space. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but if that, mag- if that magnetosphere was not there, the surface of earth would be like a radiated lifeless wasteland. Right. We, we would be Mars. Or yeah. Or there would be stuff living here that could live in that environment. Okay. It just wouldn't be anything like us. Because we're like all of our biotics here are very, they're not shielded for heavy radiation. They're just not like heavy radiation will, will do a lot of damage. Now people have found some stuff. So I wonder if maybe pre-flood there, there was also an aqua sheath. Like there was a, some different type of shielding that. Yeah, there was, so there was the magnetic, there was the magnetic field and then there was an aqua sheath of a freaking a vapor layer, maybe multiple vapor layers in the upper atmosphere that also acted as a sunlight block. So it allows heat and you know light through, but it, it blocks all that hard radiation. We use, we use heavy water today in our nuclear reactors to block all the heavy neutrons. Like mm. it stops them dead. So if you had a, a, like a thick vapor sheath completely you know, way up in the upper atmosphere that just completely surrounded the globe, you would never see it. Right. But it would block way more radiation. And so, it, and so there would be far less of things like cancer and just all the, all the strange right. stuff that we get that's caused by, by DNA degradation. Because, you know, one of those heavy neutrons comes flying off the sun and it slams into one of your DNA and turns it into like a, a mutant. And that thing starts reproducing tons of cells and that becomes a cancer tumor. Yeah. So it's possible that the, that the life expectancy of hundreds of years pre-flood or say pre cataclysm, like yeah. the last cataclysm, yeah, absolutely could have, the the could environment be, there could have been more shielded from, d- you know, yes, deadly and radiation. That, and it, it also is what's interesting is it kind of makes sense because there is some there is like if you if you put uh, like land based animals in higher pressure environments, so basically you just increase the atmosphere. Like we live in b- roughly twenty five psi at sea level. Uh, 14. Oh, is it 14? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't remember the number. So if it was 14, that's fine. So, but, but if you double that, so you make it t- 24. Okay. Yeah. Then 
technically th like things can grow larger because there's more there's more like support. You see what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly. So because you know people look at these enormous dinosaurs or even the megafauna previous to the into the Pleistocene, and you're like, why are they get how are they getting so big? You know, like what what you know like what was how, how like some of these dinosaurs they found like the like the Titanosaurus or, and the Alamosaur, the one that's in the Perot Museum in Dallas. That thing is enormous. Yeah. Uh, it's it's so big that like they don't understand how its nerves can talk to you know how its brain can talk to its tail like you right. know it would take so long for the signal to get there that it's like you're like yeah bro I said that last week like you know what are you doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, but a higher pressure which would I'm sorry but a higher pressure which would be caused by a vapor sheath in other words if there was a, lo a layer of water vapor way up there in the atmosphere that would be sitting on the atmosphere and it would raise the pressure right you know so if you had multiple ones of those and you basically had a much thicker atmosphere at the surface. So that the PSI was, you know, I don't know, 50 or 80 PSI. Well, nothing here would notice because it's all of our internal pressures would also be 50 or 80 PSI. Right. You know, but there's, but it's still, you're moving around in a, in a much thicker soup. Right. Which would call, which would give support. And then it's easier to get oxygen. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like you'd have so much more access yeah. to oxygen. Um, you had told me about these experiments that were done with fish where they, they, yeah. When they increase the pressure in the tanks, that the, the, the fish, the fish get, grew bigger. Yeah, much larger, yeah. So That's just with regular cod or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So the support structure, like with a denser material or a denser fluid around you, whether it's a gas, you know, yeah. liquid, whatever. And then it would make the flying things make sense. The gigantic, yeah. because those things like, you're like, they can't fly, but they right, could. Right, but they'd be more buoyant. Yeah. If right? the, if denser it, materials would be more buoyant. Yeah, you wouldn't have to have water. as much wingspan to lift yourself up in 50 PSI as you do now in 14. Because the air is so much thinner, you know, that you have to like to fly like a bird, which is like flapping your wings and stuff. You need a lot of, yeah, a lot more wingspan. Uh, Brett just threw this out. Quick tangent: solid sheets of mica also stop heavy neutrons <laughs> and are used in nuclear reactors. That's so true. there are these solid sheets of mica that they that were taken out of the pyramids in Mexico. Yeah, she, they, they sheathed the pyramids in Teotihuacan. Holy shit! But we got to take a break. We're at the end of the first segment here. That's right. Looks like it's running uh, quite a bit smoother, Brett. Yeah, it is running smoother. Snake Brett. Snake Brett. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Talk more about snakes. Just saying. Yeah. Snake Bros. Two limited individuals. Wait. <laughs> I'm Discussing that up. unlimited things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't fuck it up. You just gotta turn around. You know? <laughs> or you can just be like Angels and Demons and Monsters and Servants. Yeah. yeah. Angels and Demons and Monsters and Servants. <laughs> totally chicken, unlimited. Chicken, pork, and beef dish. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All of our subject matter has a life expectancy of two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah yeah so there was a i can't scroll this thing up but there was a he uh brett gave us a great analogy for the telomeres um that i wanted to throw in there real quick if kyle can scroll it up there uh yeah so the good good analogy is uh, the plastic cap on the end of shoelaces right it keeps the shoelace from fraying but it does wear out over time uh but ideally you could sort of recap the shoelace you could recap that on the end of the shoelace and then you could use them indefinitely until the shoelace itself snaps, but <laughs> or it gets caught in a fire or whatever. But yeah, so that's that's what the telomeres are like. They they sort of they will fray over time. And if we could find out a way a way to replace the caps, then we could continue reproducing like that. It's a shitty analogy. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, Harsh. Yeah, no, it's a good one. <laughs> I'm breaking all the rules over here. <laughs> yeah. No, I got a lot of stuff going on. Like I've got two beers open. Yeah, this is my second beer. <laughs> but uh I've got this new monitor and this timer 
and this thing, and then Brett on the <laughs> Brett, IFB. You're a shitty analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm getting started is kind of it's a lot more than I'm used to just like pushing a button and oh, yeah. ready You're, to go. More parts of your brain are, are working now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two limited individuals oh, with with multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> out of memory uh, yeah and we, we have this you know long-standing rule of no redos yeah <laughs> so i'm like i'm gonna redo that though <laughs> i am gonna go back and redo that that's fine i'll just cut it in no one will ever know except you will <laughs> damn it <laughs> fine um so i'm is there anything else you can think of with the with the life expectancy i mean kind of covered that as far as I know, the, the broad strokes of it. Well, I, the only other thing is, I mean, you, you basically pointed this out, but in one way or another, but uh, uh, the, the difference in a year or the cycles of a, of the yeah, planet. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're embedded in the cycles. And so the cycles matter, right? All these cycles are, you know, the cycles of, of nature. Like we have, the the gross the growing season, you know the yeah the four seasons of the of the solar year right but but you can see all of the life on the planet especially plant life is the most yeah you know uh, blatant right, right? animal all life of, is more blatant for day to night but but yeah. also animals have like humans for example the the um, the reproductive cycle for for women you yes. know their fertility is is linked to the moon. Right, it's like a lunar. Well, yeah, yeah, but it's also exactly the same period as the Venus cycle, which is really strange. That's interesting too. So, Nine months, and 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 when women get together, like you know, they yeah, their their cycles their will, cycles will merge, to match, yeah. And it it's it's interesting to me. I've thought about the way. I think that how impl- how brilliant that is, like in terms yeah. of design, that that they're they're so if you if you change your position on the planet, you're in a different season. Yeah. Um, if you go to the southern hemisphere, it's going to be reversed. Right. So as you change positions, the like say you you because we don't stay in the same place, right? If you're nomadic, yeah, and you're moving around, there is an optimal sort of environmental factor to to reproduction. Yeah. In many cases, with, right. With life. So whereas a tree doesn't move around. It, yeah, sedentary. Right. They don't have that capability to to change their, you know, it, right. it's, they don't have the same. Day is where day is. <laughs> right. They they <laughs> pollinate at the same time. Yeah. And, but but it does change a little bit depending on the environment. If the weather is not yeah. right or whatever, they'll they're. Yeah. Like they'll sometimes drop, it'll screw them up. Or, yeah. They'll or dr- they'll, it gets real warm and then they drop seeds and it's and yeah. then it freezes again. Yeah. So with people, when we move around like a woman's fertility period can shift. change and shift. Yeah. And so when, when you join a society of people and you're around all these other people, it, it sort of like merges with theirs. It's like, yeah, it, it's, I think that's a cool thing, but it's just a, it's, I'm using that to point out the fact that these things are linked to the earth. So for example, we haven't experienced this yet, but if we were to leave this planet, and we were go to another planet that had totally different length of the year. Yeah, different axial tilt. Right. Different seasons. Maybe no seasons at all. Yeah. If you want different seasons, you have to move north or south. It might totally screw up the whole, like, what would be normal, the normal fertility period. Yeah, for and what if it had a 32-hour day? Right. Most people would be like, oh, my God. I would, I would be like, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so so the the cycles of the of the the environment that we're in have, you know, they play a huge role. So the idea in, in life expectancy, you could consider that the same. Like if, if the year of a, of a different life form from another planet, one of their years was, you know, 300 of of ours or whatever, then they may have much longer, more subtle, you know, cycles or whatever. Like every, like, yeah. So they would, they would live much longer lives, but Maybe not necessarily. Not necessarily, but the point is, is not that, not subjectively. Right, and it, and like you were saying, depends on the axial tilt. Like, like if the if the planet say was its axis was was completely ninety degrees to the plane of the the ecliptic or whatever. Yeah. Um, they may all be like hardcore 
hydro, uh, um, what is the freaking word? Hibernation. Yeah. Right. When they go around the, so they're not facing the sun for like six months. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because if it was, they would just be in complete darkness for right and so, cold. Yeah, so it's like they go into some. You don't want to live on the equator. On the equator, like it would be weird. Right, <laughs> it's a permanent dawn. Right, but that's my point. Is that, is that it's <laughs> like you you were pointing this out that it is environmental, but also you know we have these things like the, the telomeres that you were talking about. Yeah, but, but uh, that was the only other thing I would bring up. About well, that, okay, so that reminded me of some stuff um, that I already forgot. Uh, <laughs> Damn it. I should have noted them down. But that's why we, when you brought up the Anunnaki, um, if they, you know, if they were real and they supposedly lived for hundreds of thousands of years and they came from some planet, Nibiru. Right. Well, whose year was 300, 3,000 something of ours. Right. One orbit of the sun for it was, it took it three, 3,300 Earth years. Right. That's one year to them. Right. So there's this just. That's half of, that's half of written history for us. There's this uh, popular uh, phrase or saying from the Bible, which is like a thousand years is a day to, is a day to me. Yeah. And a day is a thousand years. Yeah. It's the so, reversal that's, that's interesting. But it's, it, it just depends on which way, which perspective. Right. So if, you, if you're looking. So sometimes you go up to God and you're like, what's up, man? He's like, oh my God, this day is taking forever. No, I'm saying it's, <laughs> it's, it's the perspective of which, like if to me, a day is a thousand years when I'm on earth. Yeah. Or, or when I'm on my planet, one of your days is, th- is yeah, one of, you know, one, a yeah. thousand years is one of, I mean, I was, yeah, I a got thousand year years is one of my days. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or if I'm on earth, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's just basically, it's basically saying to me, it's always indicated like that it's time, that, that time is, is, uh, is variable and that whatever, whatever the God, the architect is, is saying that like, it doesn't matter to me. Like I can, I am outside of it. Right, that's and therefore the, can move through it, however right. it choose. That that's the more say traditional interpretation that time doesn't matter to God. But if 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 I it mean, wasn't like if it wasn't it. the Creator God that said that to somebody, yeah, and it was actually some somebody, right. some some on, on, some, Anunnaki, some th- something with advanced butt flaps playing the God Gambit, yeah, right. They're they're <laughs> bas- they're saying it both ways because when they when they go to Earth and there's like one day, they're like, oh my God, like, yeah. this is not, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can I could live a thousand years here and it's a day. Yeah, for me. Right. That's what it's like. So coming to Earth must be like going to a nightclub for them. Like shit's all <laughs> happening real fast and stuff, you know. And then they're like, "Man, I'm tired. I gotta go home." <laughs> yeah. Right. And they leave. <laughs> That's why they're right. always complaining about that. Like it's, it's like every time they turn around, there's millions of humans and they're all fucking making noise, and they wipe a shitload of them out. They're like, "Okay, I finally get some sleep." And then like they wake up and there's just fucking millions of humans again, you know, because right. they were sleeping a long time. Uh, <laughs> the giant sleeping under the mountain. That's right. But uh, another thing I was thinking about, and this is kind of what, like in terms of the topic of life expectancy, this is like way, way out on the fringe. But there's this, there's the, uh, the concept of the multiverse, um, which is a, it's an end run. I think we've talked about it a little bit. It's an end run on probability because the problem of the, the problem that modern science has with the with why is everything here like wh- you know why do we exist why does every why does anything exist as opposed to nothing yeah right they ha- they basically have to to beg the beg for the one free miracle of of uh terence mckenna fame like that's what he said you know he's like science says give us one free miracle and we'll explain the rest and that one free, free miracle is the creation of all the matter and all the energy in the entire universe right <laughs> out of nothing <laughs> right <laughs> so one free mirror <laughs> and we'll explain the rest <laughs> that's awesome so to get around that problem because uh you know you can't use physics to get around it because prior to the big bang taking place physics doesn't doesn't mean anything because it, because the, the the nature of the big bang itself arranges the laws of physics as the universe forms so previous to the big bang taking place there are no physics as we know it i mean there probably were but they're not anything that we have, so we can't, physics cannot inquire past, right? right? So there's this idea of the multiverse, okay? Because the other thing is, is like, you have these, these very specific things about our universe that are, that seem tailored. Okay, so 
there's multiple, there's many ways to look at it, but basically there are all these numbers that are, that are kind of ratios between this and that, right? So the ratio between the strengths of the strong and weak nuclear force, the ratio between the strengths of the electromagnetic force and the, and the gravitic one, yeah. uh, the, the fine structure constant, all these numbers that are, that are, you know, that are very precise in terms of like, they go out, they go, you know, they extend out to thousands of digits and they have to be, if you change them by one, a single, you know, billionths of a freaking uh, whatever, if you changed it, you made that one into a two way out there, you know, a hundred zeros down the, down the line, the universe would completely be different. Yeah. We would, it would, you know, there were like, if you, if you very slightly changed the, the ratio between gravity and electromagnetics, everything would fall apart. Right. There were no work. stars would perform. It would, it, it would, the universe would just be full of, ga of hydrogen gas and that's right. it. Cold hydrogen gas. Or if you change it the other way a little bit, stars would all be like one mile across and gravity would be ridiculously powerful, you know, and they would last, a star would last about a year and they'd be yeah. like a mile in diameter and they'd have like five G's on the surface, you know, just be like, so the universe seems to be anthropogenically tailored, you can say. In other words, it's, it's, it's tuned very fucking precisely to where this, this kind of long lived sort of grandiose giant whirling you know, whirlpools of stars that last for billions of years and have all this time to build up these enormous structures of energy uh, and then, then scatter out more complicated, complicated materials as stars, you know, burn, fuse things together and then blow them out into there. And then you like, so you get more complex materials and you end up with planets that can have large numbers of elements on it that can then support life, so on and so forth, right? This universe is tailored to support life as we know it, not just like us, but any kind of complex anything because... Right. You start tweak you start tweaking those numbers and you cease to have complexity at all. Right. So to get around this problem of like how improbable is it that the universe would just be that way by accident? It's almost infinitely improbable that it would happen by chance. Right. So to get around this problem, you have the multiverse, which basically states that there are an infinite number of universes. Uh of all possible configurations and they're constantly coming in and out of they're, you know, their big bangs are happening and universes are dying all over the place nonstop. It's just an endless parade of an infinite number of universes of all possible types. Okay. Right. So this is where you get the idea of parallel universes where you can think of like you're in a universe and then there's one parallel to yours just to the right and another one parallel just to the left. And on the one to the right, everything is exactly the same except one electron somewhere in time went a different way. That's yeah. it. And as you got, as you get farther out from yours, the difference, the differences become larger and larger until they're enormously different, right? Right. So, all that explained, <laughs> this idea of life expectancy, if we do exist in some kind of matrix of infinite number of universes like that, then that, that also means that there's functionally an infinite number of universes where I am in them conscious in some form or another. And you are too and everybody else, yeah. right? But things are different, like I'm wearing a red shirt on that in one of those universes or whatever. But the the idea is, is like, technically, there will be a universe where not only am I there, but I also live forever. Yeah. Because everything has to happen, right? So the way, there, that's, this is very strange, but like the only, people are trying to come up with, well, is there some way we can test for this? The other problem with that. <laughs> what? For scientists? There's lots of problems. <laughs> yeah. The other big problem with that is that if, if. There has to be infinite universes where, so that pretty much makes everything possible. Then somewhere God created the universe. Right. And 6,000 years old <laughs> and, the, and the bones of the dinosaurs were put there to confuse us. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And it could be this one. You don't know. Yeah. That's right. Exactly yeah. right. You, you do an end run. Evolution around, is bullshit. Right. You do an end run. Christians are right. You do an end run around probability and you just prove everyone right. It, it doesn't help you. You know, <laughs> Brett, Brett's like, he's trying, to, he's trying to type exactly what I just said. He got pissed. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Beat me to Beat it. Me to it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So there's this, there's this, there's a, people have criticized this idea by saying you can't test for it because there's no way to falsify it. How could you falsify something like this? Right. And so if, if, a, if, a, if a concept in science is unfalsifiable, it is not a viable hypothesis because there's no way to test it. Yeah. Okay. Well, somebody did come up with a, with a test, sort of. Um, they offer a million dollars for somebody who can do it. 
<laughs> it hasn't passed the test <laughs> yeah. yet. How okay, can they ever take the million dollar to, like, test for the multiverse prize yet? <laughs> 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 well, I'll explain to you why. Uh, because the test only works subjectively. And it will only give the person doing the test that information. Great. Right, so it still doesn't help us. But somebody could falsify it or not. Yeah. But and this is so this is the way the test works. It's very strange. It's based on quantum crap. It's already been falsified in one of the universes. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. In one like of the universes brain implosion. The multiverse doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. The uh, whoa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I've had arguments with people about this. I'm I'm like, dude, in the multiverse, every possible thing has to happen. It's an infinite and they're like, no, not every possible thing, just this just stuff that could happen in physics. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the physics itself that changes. Yeah. You know, anyway, uh, so the test for this goes down to the quantum stuff in consciousness crap, right? The, the, right? This is what the, the test uses to test for the multiverse. Like if consciousness is a fundamental thing, which it appears to be in terms of the quantum crap, then consciousness will be fundamental Period. Okay, so like you, the, I, the the way the test works is you have a you have one of these Schrodinger's cat guns. Okay, the Schrodinger's cat experiment is basically you put the cat in the box, and then you fire an electron down a tube, and the tube splits halfway down to the right and to the left. And if the electron goes to the right, the cat dies, and if it goes to the left, the cat doesn't die. Right. So the 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 purpose of this thought experiment is to show that because of quantum uncertainty, until you actually open the box and look at the cat, it is both alive and dead. Yeah. Right. And it's not it's not that you just don't know which one it is. It's both <laughs> because the electron goes down both tubes until you look. Right. So uh, it was supposed to that, that was supposed to show the absurdity of quantum mechanics, but it didn't. It's just very interesting. So anyway, you have a gun built, built like that. You fire, you pull the trigger an electron goes down a tube. And if it goes to the right, a bullet fires and shoots. And if it goes to the left, it doesn't put that gun to your head and pull the trigger over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And if you never die, the, the multiverse is real. Yeah. <laughs> Quantum roulette. <laughs> That's right. In quantum roulette, you could never die, but only if the multiverse is real. But there will be millions. But you would of have to live forever. So there you'd would have be, to be in one of those universes. Well, yeah. You, that, all that aligns. <laughs> like, if, if the multiverse is real, then there is one where you live forever. And there's one where you pull the trigger forever and you never die. And that's going right. to be the one that you end up in. How, like, do you know, I was right. <laughs> how do you know that you didn't do it in another universe and it didn't happen? Because you could be. No, no. There the, will be millions of universes where you're dead. But there will be one where you're not, and that's the one you're thinking in because it can't, it cannot be any of the others, right? So, <laughs> but that would also have to be the one where you can live forever. Yeah, and then right. you that's would right. never get to the end of your life, so you would never actually know. Right, you have to keep pulling the trigger to continue to prove the multiverse real. Yeah, you yeah. can't ever stop doing it. Right. No that's one's why, ever going to do that. Right. So the multiverse is bullshit. Right. It's just. <laughs> it's, yeah, I agree. I just think it's an interesting. It's an interesting. It, it actually becomes what creates the multiverse or not. So if you if no one ever does it, then the multiverse. Well, then bullshit. somebody's doing it. <laughs> it's already happening. It's been happening forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's like I said, way out on the fringes of life expectancy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there way could be, if there. the multiverse is real, a universe in which you live forever and can never kill yourself, <laughs> trying to prove that the multiverse is real. So, yeah. <laughs> and the, I mean, the idea is yes that you're you're you could look at it in terms of like your consciousness is shifting multiverses to get, to be in a one in one that it, that it, where it continues. Yeah, that would be interesting too. Is that if you like when when we die? Yeah, but it's, explain the Mandela effect, right? When we die, we actually just go to another the consciousness. You shift to a multiverse. The, where the you're, focus of your consciousness just shifts to somewhere where, where you didn't not, die, where you're not yeah. dead. Right. So th that's why I think of like if the multiverse is real behind you in the past are millions of universes where you died every possible way every at every point in your life. <laughs> that's why people are so scared of it. That's right. <laughs> that's all the, all the thoughts in your mind where you're like, oh, my God, I could have just died. Yeah. It's because you did. You did. <laughs> you did actually more times than not. Yeah. yeah. It's like the it's like playing a video game. You know, you're like, oh, psa. Boom, ah. <laughs> start over from boom, ah, yeah. damn it. <laughs> See, video games are just a, a cruel joke that we're playing on ourselves subconsciously. 
showing us like right. this it's is like, actually this is what how you're doing, you're doing what <laughs> yeah. you're doing. Somewhere out there, you have a save game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you were playing the video game and you died, but you got it. You started over and right. you're still playing the video. And you're game trying now. to find the the <laughs> one part with the one playthrough where you don't die ever. Right. Right. <laughs> but I mean, while you're actually playing a video game, you died. That's right. <laughs> In many ways. That's right. And some, like, a, an enormous chasm opens up beneath your house and just swallows you whole. And other yeah. ones, a giant dragon comes out of the sky and just eats you. And somewhere in in the ether, someone threw a controller. That's right. <laughs> Got really mad. Got really mad. And then kept playing. Yep. And rage quit. That's, yeah, so <laughs> I'm screwed because I, I never finish any video games. I never beat them. I play them for a little bit and then quit. Yeah. So that's probably my fate. Just gonna play this for a Can while. Can you quit the multiverse? You're I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with this. Throwing my control. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> the idea of of living forever. I'm just like, no. I, it's, yeah, no. It would be. I, I don't want to do it's, that. Usually, immortality is treated as a curse. Well, I mean, I don't want to live forever in this sense. The I'm ready to like, you know. Yeah, I don't want to. Like, uh, do I have to keep this shell? Yeah, like, I'll be ready to move on. Can I upgrade to the, to the next <laughs> to the next level. Yeah, the the hardware gets old. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I want to go back to the uh, what Brett had brought up about the the mica, okay, being this the shielding the shielding of radiation. Yeah, um, and they shielded all those all those pyramids, but they didn't tell Tiwakan. Like, and it was yeah. beneath the surface. So, like, when you looked at them, you couldn't see it, but under under the first layer of stone was this layer and they were enormous flat thin sheets that they had taken from all the way down in South America. Like, yeah. so you have the transport problem of these enormous flimsy floppy f flat thin sheets of mica that they were transporting thousands of miles. Yeah. You know, only just to hide them where no one can How see them. How do they know they got them from, from South America? Cause you can tell like the same way with any, any geological erratic stone, they can tell like you, you could test it and figure out where exactly it came from. Okay, there's so only there, one place in the world. There's where no matches. way for them to, to actually like synthesize it or, Grow it. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't know. So Teotihuacan is the the same place we were talking about where they right where the the pyramid of the plumed serpent is where there was like the maps and mercury underneath. Yeah. Uh, the new tunnel they found under the pyramid of the moon, but the the plates were found in the pyramid of the sun. Right when they were digging into the side of it. Yeah. When they, it was a quote unquote restoration. Yeah. Well, the it used to be covered in. It was like jungle all over the yeah. place, and and the guy who started uncovering it was uh, basically a tomb robber. Yeah, and just had this massive crew of people, and they were just digging into, and they dug like too far. Yeah, into the dirt, and just started. They were digging part of the wall out of the freaking thing. And well, that's and then he started. He he started to remove the sheets of mica and sell right. them. That's yeah. how he found. That's how they found them because yeah. they dug too far. Yep, too far, too far into the wall. They was like. <laughs> Probably. They were treasure hunting. Yeah. Yeah. So they found, and they, they took them all out of there and like, just, dude. Yeah. Well, two whole uh, sides, two, two entire sides of that pyramid, the mica was removed and sold, uh, you know. But it still exists in the other ones? Yeah. That's so freaking badass. Yeah. They, they put a stop to it eventually. And if, it's terrible because if you look at the sides that he did like, quote unquote, restorate, they're, they're, they look terrible. I mean, it just was really shoddy work. Like he wasn't even trying. Yeah. That's that that site is really fascinating me right now. Yeah, like I'm. It also very. It looks like circuitry if you look at it. If you look at an overhead map of it, it's very strange how it looks. It just looks like a a circuit diagram. It's weird. I remember seeing a, a, another diagram a while back. So you have the pyramid of the sun, and then there's the the avenue of the dead or yeah. whatever they call it. This big fat road, the that, Avenue of the D, that lead you know just this <laughs> flattened area that leads up to the pyramid, and yeah. on either side of that area are these smaller pyramids, and they're all step pyramids. Yeah, the mastabas, and they're you know not symmetrically positioned. Yeah, they're all different distances or whatever, not directly across from each other. But I remember seeing a diagram that I couldn't find later that had the the orbits of the planets. Oh. Like, so the pyramid of the sun is ah. the sun and the orbits, the, the orbital rings around it, like matched up with those, with the, with the, uh, with the mastabas or whatever, the small pyramids that are leading down that road. Yeah. That's cool. And I don't know if that was true. I tried to look it up more recently and I couldn't find it. 
to try to see if it was, you know, to verify it. Um, but dude, it's entirely possible. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. That's freaking badass. Yeah, like just just like that the the idea that it was a seismic, a global seismic survey device. Yeah. Uh, where different pools of water would vibrate if there was an earthquake in China or whatever, you know? Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's freaking awesome, awesome. Dude. Cymatics. Yeah, cymatics. Um, that but, place just has, to me, like, I'm I, comparing that with Giza. Like, Giza has been, you know, people have been digging into that site and finding all this stuff and, and for so long. But this one, you know, Teotihuacan was really discovered much later and there's still to me like there's so many freaking secrets yeah there's still secrets. to be discovered because they don't they don't even they think it's a necropolis so there's all right. kinds of ways they won't look at it right and it's very similar with egypt but there, with egypt there's there's a lot of people that are on you know the quote-unquote fringe yeah that have made all these other connections like robert buval right and pre and previous to modern archaeology no one thought that it was just a funeral i mean they, nobody thought that that's what it was right I mean, some people may have thought that they were tombs or whatever, but they didn't know what the pyramids were. Right. You know, I mean, when Al Mahmoud broke into it, when he dug his his famous tunnel or whatever, he broke into it not because he thought there was a pharaoh in there, but because he thought there was information. Yeah. He called it treasure to get his, to motivate his dudes or whatever, right. but he was, he looking, he was after them. data. Yeah. He ended up paying them with all this like gold that he got from some, <laughs> yeah. some other site. Yeah. Like, like, look at this treasure we found yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, so they could put it in there so that they could <laughs> yeah. find it. Yeah. <laughs> Stash around. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Easter egg hunt. But yeah, man, I, I really want well, so to get into this other site. Dude, the, the bike and stuff is, is interesting also because it, like, like we were saying, it is, it's an excellent, it's excellent shielding. It's an insulator. Yeah. Right. And so we we're back. But I didn't realize it was radiation shielding oh, yeah. as well. It's also, so it's also, shielding. it's also like the best electric, electrical insulator. Yeah. It's one of the best. Yeah. Um, and it can, and it can be like shaved so thin because of the way it, the way it layers itself in little thin right. sheets. You can almost get like a single atom thick yeah. sheet, you know, if you could, if you could hold it without a break in or whatever, but the, uh, and there, and it's light and it, it's, it's almost, um, indestructible by fire. Like you can heat it up as much as you want. And it's not going to hurt it. You just fucking run torch flame on it. It doesn't do anything to it. You know, That's you have to get up to a melt. It's melting point before it'll. It won't burn, basically. It'll melt, but yeah. it doesn't burn. So it's like, it's a, it's just an excellent material for all kinds of reasons. But it's interesting that they layered in here because we were just talking about life expectancy and the idea that if there was this sort of, this this aqua sheath around the planet that shielded us from a lot more radiation, and then there's some kind of cataclysm, you know, comets punch through it, and then it changes a bunch of stuff, and that all that falls in part, partially in creating the deluge, right? The, the flood yeah. of legend. Suddenly... Everything's getting being bombarded by radiation that is just ridiculous. To the, like, yeah. we're used to it. We're used to the fact that we can go out for a couple of hours during a day in the summer and turn brown, like yeah. literally br blacken. Okay, yeah, <laughs> like you're getting charred. Back then, that would have been terrifying. Okay, right. so it's interesting because there are there are all these dolmens all over the world. They're, they're called dolmens in in England and in you know in Europe or whatever. But they're they have different names everywhere. But basically, they're they look like hurriedly constructed makeshift structures except that they're built out of enormous stones yeah. so somebody will it's like two or three standing ones in and they put this gigantic one on top of those right and it, it's it's obviously not a shelter from it's just not going to block any wind you know it's not it's not a house it but it always the emphasis is the enormous stone on the top right, right. like what you want to do is pick up a gigantic rock so that you can sit under it Right, you want it. That's yeah. what it looks like, and it, and they they look hasty, like somebody was. It's a radiation shelter. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I I have this picture in my head of like, there's this advanced civilization on the Earth back then. You know, just just one group of humans that were advanced, and they were had been, they have sent expedition expeditions out all over the world, and then this cataclysm happens, and wherever those expeditions are, they're throwing up these enormous temporary shelters just to to huddle under until they can be rescued by the by. Yeah. Other people of their civilization. And then they build this city down there in Mexico that is completely shielded. Right. But at the same time, like where, why would they shield this pyramid? So it's, it's not a big open hall for people to gather in. 
but it, it so it's not now. That, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like the 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 mystery is it's it's cool to think that whatever culture survived the cataclysm that they they, they it's not had just the, that <clears throat> they had the the know like the the knowledge and understanding of like what was going on afterwards like what yeah. you're saying right yeah to the point that they could build something to protect against that yeah um and it isn't just the pyramids though that had it's under the roads it's it's the whole place has that has this layer of shit beneath it as far as i know so Micah? so so the idea is that there could be a an underground uh like a like a darren q you there like an underground city yeah. that has that's shielded with mica on top of it and maybe they did that because they determined that like they couldn't for whatever reason the tunnels weren't deep enough or something i don't know that too much radiation would get through yeah i don't know it's it's fascinating yeah i like to talk about that's more but we got to take a break <laughs> that's true it's break time two minutes over snake break time snake breaks Snake my cup. Mystery lovers, pill seekers, and conspiratorialists all across the fruited plain. This is Brothers of the Serpent. First half of the second hour. Ah, Third beer. segment. Third segment. Third beer. Third beer for Kyle. He's. Uh, it's it's a violating a cardinal rule, but he, he dated at the very beginning, so no one cares now. Lone Star. <laughs> yeah. Lone Star. <laughs> <laughs> it's my last beer anyway. So. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, it's the last one I have. At least it's not wine, because that was the. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the folly. Yeah, the pilot disappeared because of the wine. Oh, wine! <laughs> You're like, I, I finished this whole bottle of wine when we were doing that show. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours of snake bros, stand up and fall. <laughs> Slither to bed. That's right. <laughs> so, um, oops. Whoops. Too many things to do over here. Yeah. Forgot to turn off the old uh, climate controlled ten by ten by ten by ten by ten by ten climate controlled cube. So what's the what's the topic? What do we call this topic? All right, so show me the money. <laughs> yeah, show me the money and <laughs> indigenous. Yeah, that's right. So I was. Should uh, I go through that indigenous thing, that rant? Yeah, yeah I would just I, lead into this with we we were talking about the Teotihuacan. I was having a discussion about it with Ty uh, after he listened to the last episode. And, and uh, you know, we were talking about the we don't know their four tombs. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that they're just like everything that they're discovering in these things is in these tunnels. They're just they look at everything that they find, every new thing that they find through the lens of tomb. Right. And uh, he just suggested kind of something very, lens. very obvious and simple that I hadn't just totally overlooked, which is like, well, maybe it's about the money. Yeah. You know, these guys that are doing all this research, it's about the money. And basically uh, he said they're treasure hunters. I don't know what he was saying specifically. Okay. I, it just, you know, they're, they're funding. Maybe, you know, the people that are funding them are, are looking for the money. Maybe it, maybe it's looking for the loot, but it, but to me, I was like, Oh my God, like massive conspiracy. Yeah. Um, they're not looking the, the money that's funding the research is is not looking for loot it's looking for a specific outcome yeah that's right it's it's looking to drive the narrative exactly so yes now like the, the, that immediately immediately made me think of you know the the hundred times you were walking into the grotto and we were working there just like it's indigenous <laughs> like <laughs> yeah so yeah go go into that yeah so the word indigenous is like you can use it for anything, plant species or whatever. When you say something is indigenous to an area, it means that that's where it belongs. That that's where it comes from. That that's its origin spot. And that basically can't, that, that term, therefore, can't really apply to anything on Earth, any, almost any life on Earth. Because stuff has changed so drastically over the, over, the, over the history of the planet that like there's nowhere that something... 
you know, like we come from the earth itself, not from any particular point on it. <clears throat> right. Uh, like you could, you would have to say, you know, the, the, like the out of Africa theory or, or whatever, which is kind of, it's, it's really, it's on its way out right now. But it's for a really long flimsy time. after they found that yeah. guy in Europe. Yeah. And then <laughs> anyway, had, yeah. So they, had, and, and they had, there were others besides that too, but yeah. So, the, but the idea of that is basically implying that all humans originate from Africa. Right. And like, so, so why do they say this? Okay. Because when you look at Africa today, it is the most prolific in terms of number of species, types of mammals. Okay. They, it has the largest number of mammal species. Everywhere else has smaller number of species. Yeah. Okay. The reason for that is because Africa was like the least touched by the last cataclysm. Yeah. It has most of its megafauna still. Right. Whereas in the Americas, uh -huh. all the megafauna was wiped out because this was like ground zero. Okay. In other words, that is just for the past. That is that. This epoch. Right. It only accounts for the Holocene, this, this particular intergla interglacial. It's like, but we know that, that modern man has been around, like anatomically modern man has been around for at least 200,000 years, which yeah. most of that is not in the, in, in the Holocene because the Holocene is only 12,000 years long. So to, the idea that we came from Africa because Africa is the cradle of life, because it looks like that now because of the last cataclysm left it, left most of its life unkilled. Wow. I, okay, that's cool. Okay, I have not thought. It's of it just that completely way. ridiculous. Yeah, and it's also it also goes back to the <clears throat> their ideas of uh, uh, isolationism. Like the reason they want it to be that way is because they don't think that we moved around a lot. Yeah, and if we did move around, it like we we picked everything up and then we moved and then we stayed somewhere and yeah. and we we got there we stayed forever. But the idea like so we refer to the American Indians here as natives. Native means you were born there. That's a correct term. But we're all natives. Anybody born in the, Ameri in the Americas is a native of America. Right. But you can't use it that way politically, right? But they also refer to them as indigenous, which implies that they, like, sprouted from the ground here, which is ridiculous because they have the whole Bering Strait concept of them yeah. coming over here. So then why do you refer to them as indigenous? Yeah, if they came from elsewhere, right. then they're not indigenous. And Yeah. And then if you go look at the all the Native American lore, they no, they don't claim that they came from here either they do say that these are these are the lands of our ancestors right but at the same time you you understand and they understand that they're talking about the most recent ancestors. these are the lands of my ancestors too right yeah <laughs> just i just don't have as very, many very here recent, yeah. as you yeah <laughs> but um they all talk about their you know they all have their their oral traditions or their their tribal myths and lore of coming here right. and usually finding some other people that were already here and wiping them out all the way down to, to the last person, you know, like, and they, they don't, there's no talk of genocide. Like the, the Navajo talk about the moon eyed people that, that these people that they encountered when they first got here. And it's a very strange reference, but they call them the moon eyed people and they killed every single last one of them. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's the idea of, of an indigenous and human population is ridiculous it's just completely ridiculous right but there is a there's a power structure based on that right type of thing absolutely um so what i what i've started to say is what indigenous means whatever was there the first time a white guy saw it because <laughs> i know that sounds tor horrible but that's exactly what it means <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. That's, that's a brilliant way to describe it. It's great. <laughs> it just shows you how fucking like racist that whole the whole concept is. It's 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 uh maybe not ra maybe racist is the wrong term. It's more uh no, it's fine. What what is it where the 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 sort of imperialism that the that the Europeans had, you know, that they were just they were the advanced culture. Right. Right? And and so you have all these sort of the, the, these sort of arrogant concepts that go along with that, and they, and you know, you, you, it's reflected in the sciences of the time, right? But it's also reflected in that that no matter where you go, the quote unquote indigenous people, according to the to the white guys who found them there, yeah, when they first got there, they learn all of their their stories of their past, and they're like, oh yeah, that's all myth, right? Yeah, so you're lying. History there begins when the when the white guy first shows up and right. starts writing stuff down. Yeah, yeah, and that's all real. Yeah, but everything that those people, the indigenous people, yeah, they made all that shit up. Yeah, they made it up. I mean, it obviously, because it has spaceships in it. 
Holy shit. <laughs> okay, so that's the indigenous rant of, of, of Cliff Notes version of the indigenous rant. Like, there are no indigenous, and really life forms. Yeah, like, really, I, that was like 100 days long, yeah, that rant. Yeah, it, was, it took 100 days to... to <laughs> To flesh it out the first when, time. When no one's <laughs> responding to your rant except for to go, okay, bro, it takes a long time to work it all out because there's not any response. You just have to shout in somebody's face until they're like, oh, all right, I got to go. And then you're like, well, that didn't go quite well. Try it again tomorrow. <laughs> but I, I, I also see this with, a, you know, they talk about the, invasive species. The Cherokee also talked of the moon-eyed people who were white-skinned. Oh, didn't yeah. see well during the daylight and made all the ancient structures in, in Appalachia. Appalachia. Yep. See? They killed all the white people. <laughs> and they were already stayed up all night. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, you see this concept of invasive species. You can't have an invasive species. If there's no indigenous. If there's, yeah. It really, it, th this, really what it comes down to is the, is the, the tendency of, of people in general, I guess, to see things as static when they're not. Right? Yeah. You move somewhere, and for 50 years, you know, you, you, know, you hear your grandparents like, well, when I was young, it was like this, and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah. And so it's changed up until now, which means it's probably going to continue to change into something else. Like, in other words, that change right. is constant. It is the only thing that doesn't change. Right? Yeah. So the idea, like, we have these concepts of, and I know I'm going a little afield here, but the idea of, like, fragile ecosystems. Okay? There's no such thing as a fragile ecosystem. There is only an ecosystem that is shifting from one to another. Right. It's in the process of becoming a different ecosystem because circumstances are changing and it will become an ecosystem that is robust because it has to be. Right. We call it fragile because we want to preserve this thing as it is now. And we're like, oh, my God, it's falling apart. No, it's just changing into something that, that isn't weak. Yeah. You know, and so they, they spend billions of dollars and all this bullshit and like they're pouring out fresh water, like th that crap that was happening in California where they were dumping all the fresh water and down the rivers and shit to preserve these. The, the fish coming up to spawn. And when, when people were like, there was the enormous drought and like yeah. couldn't grow any food. And they're like, they're like, no, you can't have any water. And then they're just pouring it out into the freaking rivers and into the ocean to preserve these like fragile ecosystems of the, you know, it's ridiculous. Like, let that shit change. Yeah. And it won't be fragile. <laughs> anyway, all that stuff's tied together. The, the, the concept of indigenous and invasive species. But that's and, a great example uh, because so... This may not have been the case for what was going on in California, but but let's say that there was an economic system that was based on the the harvesting of those fish. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. so there are powerful forces in play that want those fish to survive, and they're lobbying. Yeah. And they're making sure that all this fresh water gets you know because the the fish are being wiped out not only by natural circumstances but also because they're being farmed or whatever. Yeah. So I, I, this is totally. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, this is a hypothetical, but the the it illustrates a, a truth in that these power structures come into being based on certain environmental circumstances, and then they want to preserve. Them and then they them. want to preserve them. The people that 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 got rich off of trains, yeah, don't want automobiles. Right. They want people to or ride trucks. in trains. Yeah, they want truckers. Yeah, they don't want truckers. They you know they they want people to ride in trains, so they do whatever they can to maintain. And that's that's. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Like in and of itself, because you you want to try to preserve something that that's beneficial to you, and all all life forms do this. Um, but the but in science, that that's not what science is about. Science right. is about d d like discovering what is right. So that's that's where the problem comes in. Like uh, all research takes resources. Yeah, it takes human resources. It takes a lot of you know, material resources, uh, the equipment, everything. Yeah, time, so, labor, money. Yeah, yeah. There's there's lots and lots of money in in research, and that you know. So basically, the fields of science have to be funded in some way or another. Yeah, and they're usually either funded by large corporations or government. Those are the two main primary funders of, of right. science. But all the best science is done in garages. I mean, that's, I'm serious. Like <laughs> the breakthroughs do not happen in large corporations generally. Those the, like the Manhattan project is a good example. Like we threw all these fucking resources and all this manpower and all this brain power and all this material at this project. It was something that was already theorized. The breakthroughs had already happened. You know, it just, it took 
It, it, we just threw this enormous bureaucracy with all this stuff at it until it and it worked itself out. But like, right. it didn't actually. There was nothing fundamental that happened there. Right. They just had to figure out how to. The, the fundamental thing that happened about advancement, we talked about this last time, was freedom of people to be able to. Yeah, pursue I mean, I mean, fundamental in terms of ideas for the bomb. Right. In the Manhattan Project, they already knew that, that we had the equations, we had relativity, we had the, you know, Einstein's theories and everything. Yeah. And the concepts. Now we just had to say, how do we actualize this using uranium and, and some? Right. How do we engineer it? Right. It was an right. engineering problem at that point. So the, and there was some fat, fantastic engineering done, but, and then when you go look at it, you're like, it's so simple, like. How can that have been hard? Well, it was before we had the idea, just like any puzzle. Right. But that kind of project is not ever going to come up with something like extraordinary and, and fundamental because it, it can't it can't do that. It is by nature going to think inside of a box. Right. So bringing this to the to the point about people funding these research projects in <clears throat> in archaeology. Mm-hmm. Um they're they're looking for something, and they're looking for something. Things to make us go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Star Trek. Star Trek reference there. <laughs> um, and not Star Wars. Yeah. We look for things. <laughs> things to make us go. But yeah, basically the the there there is a lot of power in the the ideas the 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 structures around. Indigenous populations. Absolutely. So, I mean, there's, there's political power. So, yeah. so if you're indigenous, you have the right to something. Yeah. You have some. Uh, you either have the right to something to the to the land to to its heritage, or you have a grievance. Yeah. And if you know, uh, in politics, a politician can exploit that grievance if it's a grievance. Right. On, on both sides. Can use right. it against both sides. Yeah. Exactly. Um, or you can exploit the the quote unquote claim to the heritage, right? Yeah. So when when you're when you're discovering ancient shit, and let's just take you know America for example, or the United States, um, when we're looking at it, what we would call today like an Indian mound or an ancient ancient site, like a you know where some culture was. Yeah. That is. Politically, not ours to look at. Right. It belongs to the indigenous people. Yeah. Right. Who are assumed to have been the ones who built it because they are indigenous and they were here before everybody else. Yeah. So that that t- like, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. So so basically, uh, like I could find we could find some some ridu- ridiculously amazing structure, and. It would have it, the, like modern archaeology. Modern, modern archaeology, if it accepted that it existed, like some, we, let's say we found some stone temple-like thing, if they even accepted that that existed, because I doubt that they would do that. But if they did, they would assume that Native Americans built it at some point, or the ancestors of Native right. Americans, right? Because that's who else, you know? Um, and so it's it's no science is done, like zero science is done, and yet the site is already. 98% figured out. They haven't even looked at it yet. But whatever it is, it was done by the Native Americans. We know that. It was done within this time period to this time period. We know that. Right. They haven't even gone there yet. And thus the rights to it are given to a group of people who no one actually knows if it belongs to them or not. Right. Or, it, you know. Um, and see, and what's, what, what's, what also happens with, like with Kennewick Man, there are groups in the native populations that understand that this power exists and don't want to lose it. So anything that comes along that, that may threaten that, in other words, where somebody finds a very ancient skeleton that is completely not a Native American, they fight it tooth and nail. For They fight anybody being able to look at it, period. They claim it's their ancestor and they just want to rebury it and stop, white people stop messing with our ancestors and shit. And they just want to, they want to bury it and cover it in concrete and don't let any science be done on it because it isn't a Native American. And they don't want there to be any scientific proof that there was somebody not Native American here before the Native Americans because that will that will threaten their status as indigenous. Exactly. And that's not just here. That that's happening, happening all over all the, the world, world yeah. everywhere. There's New Zealand there, is particularly acute there. There's fights of the basic like the quote unquote rights of the indigenous population all over the world and and 
everywhere you look, there are, you know, where there are ancient sites that those fights are very yeah. prevalent there. Yep. And it, it se- a lot of times it seems to have to do more with controlling the narrative as opposed to actually figuring out who made these things. Right. So that, that goes back to why, why are they so determined to find a tomb? And so maybe that's why they refer to everything as tombs because they know that that's safe. Maybe they're not assholes and they, they just refer to it as tombs because if you don't, you know what I'm saying? Like they know this is a safe word they can use. If you call everything a tomb or a temple, then you're fine and they can do the real work. I'm just, yeah, it's probably, it's probably maybe, not. <laughs> but, but like with Giza, like, it's, no, yeah, Giza, I'm talking about the Mexicans, the Mexican archaeologists have been like, like what they did with the Olmecs, where they realized that they just had to, they just needed to gather the data for like 40 years and then throw it all out there all at once, or otherwise it would just be skirt derped one at a time. Yeah. They've, they've got a, a sort of a history of doing this. Like they're like pretending that everything's normal, but meanwhile, they're, they're gathering the evidence. Right. Okay. So I see, I see what you're saying. So the, the funding, my, my point was that the funding for these, these massive research projects, like the thing going down in Teotihuacan. Yeah. Um, like they were digging up that tunnel for like five years. Or right. Whatever. Um, and, and apparently the whole time they're like, yeah, we think it's a tomb. Right. So they're getting the money from people that want this tomb to be discovered so that yeah. they can verify their biases yeah. <clears throat> of indigenous populations and whatever to confirm to, that, that satisfies all the political motives. Yeah. The whole political power structure, the, the, the entire thing. And, right. <clears throat> and the guys that get to the end of the tunnel, like wh- using your idea, maybe they know. Mm-hmm. Maybe they are like, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is not a tomb. But they're, they're keeping up the, the narrative in any way. And then they get in there and they're like, okay, well, it wasn't a tomb, but there was evidence of some massive thing being drug out of here. Yeah. And of course, everybody's going to assume it was the, the skeleton. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, the, because, the stone box with it. Because that's what the looters took. Yeah. The skeleton. <laughs> the skeleton. And they left all the they loot. They left all the loot. We don't need this loot. Just get this. Just get the dead guy. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I don't need these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that is that's that's that is a that is a huge conspiracy, and it's it's kind of an easier one to see. Like there isn't there isn't nobody's hiding aliens in that theory. Yeah. Um. I mean, maybe they are, but. Because maybe you you dig up an, an ancient alien, and they're like, nope, got to get that out of here because that ruined the indigenous thing too. <laughs> yeah, but the point is, well, that's the same deal with the giants. Yeah, like the giants ruins the indigenous thing. Yeah, absolutely, and like, a lot of other. St- I mean, way more than just that. Yeah, but. yeah. Even if they're not that strange, like in other words, the the concept of like we had a thicker atmosphere before the end of the ice age, and so people were just big, just like all the animals. Yeah, you know, uh, that's not that weird. It isn't, it's not like we're saying it was a completely different species of hominid. They were, they could have actually been humans. Just they were adapted to the double dentition. Yeah. And (laughs) and long heads and giant pineal glands that could read people's minds. Yeah. That's another thing. Like when you, you look at this, these ancient structures, you see the same tendency with the indigenous idea. And then when you look at the, the aliens idea, there's, presumably the same problems with the power structure. If aliens, ex- if intelligent life exists, that's in that's yeah that has been to this planet or coming to this planet now or whatever. Yeah. Like none of the existing power structures are going to want that to right. ever get out. Right. Absolutely. Because, because it's going to change the, the psyche. It's going to change everything about the people that, that live here now. Yeah. And what's important. Right. What the highest power is. Yeah. Yeah. That That's, that's, in, in ufology, that's been a long-standing theory that, like, the reason the, – the primary reason why governments don't really want to sort of do the disclosure thing, you know, even if that's – let's say that they do have all this information on UFOs and, and aliens or whatever. The reason they'll never release it is not because they're they're making deals to sell people to aliens as slaves or that or they're afraid that people will panic. And right. No, it's because it's because they do not want to upset the current power structure. Exactly. And it will do that, not by people panicking – but just by arran- rearranging what the priorities in people's minds in terms of like what is the hierarchy consist of, suddenly you will have the pe- at the top of the pyramid will no longer be like the elite; it'll be aliens. Right.
And the power structure is very fragile, which is why frequent wars are happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's always fragile. So um, with, with American history, uh, the fact that there were, there were countries like you know, all over the world or whatever that were, that were trying to send as many of their own people here to colonize it it, because they were like, man, this is vast area of land, very powerful possibilities. Yeah. They're all sending all these people here, which ultimately resulted in such a, like. It It backfired on them. Yeah. Yeah. It backfired on them because there's like all these people and they're trying to figure out how to, how to get along together. Yeah. And they're like, well, the only way to really do this is like, <laughs> it, it was just very loose yeah. compared to, compared to the monarch structures that, right. that the, existed the monarch, before. The monarch structures were too far away to govern it uh, like efficiently. Right. But they didn't care because it was, it was a race. It was yeah. like the space race. Mm-hmm. They, it was a race to get it. So they were just like, get a send them over there. I don't care. Let them build shit. Let them build whatever. Right. And, and get powerful. And we all did that. Yeah. And then eventually it's like the, the the first time in modern history that that a, a group of humans who were not kings, not nobles, came together and were just like, you know what? Fuck kings and nobles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're gonna keep doing exactly what we're doing because they like once they once they got it established and it was like you know the British basically won. Yeah. They're like, okay, now we need to lock it down. You right. know, bring down the freaking monarch Fail. hammer. <laughs> <laughs> so far away. Yeah, they so so it's like this, dude. Like they knew what it took to create affluence and and a, and a powerful yeah. society. Yeah, and that was freedom, and they allowed it so that they could win. Yeah, then it was too late. And then by the time they won, it was too late, and They're it's too far. It's like, dude, yeah, too late and too far. Yeah. Technology not good enough. Ex- except our technology is like advancing yeah. over here, right? And uh, this this group of basically peasants tells a monarch to go yeah, fuck himself. Yeah, die in a fire. Go fuck off and die in a fire. <laughs> yeah. We're like, we're going to do this. And uh, it actually succeeded. And I, th- the way I look at it is like, those those power structures, they're, they're not that old. 250 years ago. Right. So those those <clears throat> dynasties and, and, and th- like, they don't just go away with a generation. Yeah. They're like, like you have this... Th- the Palestinians and you know all yeah. of that 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 whole these these extremely ancient wars happening. Well, this one is brand new. This disturbance of the of the power structure that, like, just in terms of like monarchies versus uh, republics or or yeah or democracies, and it's still being disturbed. Like we we kind of just like fuck off, kings. Yeah, <laughs> we're well, doing now, other things. Yeah, now all over the world, they all have to kind of pretend to be democracy. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. their but but their real agenda has not really changed. No, like the hasn't. elites, right? Whether they're <clears throat> they they appear to be in power or not, yeah, they still consider themselves like that was my kingdom. Like if if anybody's watched Game of Thrones, like it doesn't matter. Like generations down the line, like my father's 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 father was yeah. the king of this land, and it's my throne. Yeah, it's terrible. But that's the way it is. Yep. They think they fucking own it because of blood. Yeah. Yep. And this is like when, when you're digging up ancient sites, ancient things that, that societies built, those, the powers that be want to claim that shit in one way or another. Yeah. I mean, like in Egypt, there's all the evidence of it. Like they, they plaster over the old guy, old Pharaoh's name and right there's on there. Yeah. You know, and then they're like, there was no old pharaoh. I've always been the pharaoh. Right. So, so the, the, the Chinese the idea that too. They would burn all fucking records and say that history starts with them. Right. The thing that makes this whole, the thing that's ridiculous about this idea is that a government can fund a scientific endeavor like digging up ancient shit and not be biased as yeah. to what it is going to discover. Like the history of governments is like that shit's mine. Yeah, and fuck everyone else. That's right. Yeah. So it's like government has one tool. It has the monopoly on the use of force. Right. And pe- people might think that that corporations are evil to to you know they're going to spend money and they're going to look for a specific you know yeah which is thing, true which is totally true yeah but they 
they're nothing compared right. to the power of They have of money, but they this. don't have the power. Right. In order to actuate power, corporations have to spend their money in the government. And the, guess what? The government doesn't sell the power to the corporation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Like yeah, you can buy it, maybe. You can, yeah, you give them a bunch of money and they're like, well, I'll see what I can do. And then maybe they'll do it. Yeah. And you just have to keep fun. You have to just keep funneling money and then, you know, promise to help them on their campaigns or whatever. But guess what? They don't ever give you the fucking power. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea that corporations like that, our governments are bought by corporations is ridiculous. That's it's completely ridiculous. Uh, that's just. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not necessarily advocating one way or the other. The point is, is that that it doesn't matter who's doing the, the research where the money is coming from. You, you have to take into account that wherever that money is coming from, those people have an agenda. Right. This is, that's why I was saying that all the best science is done in garages. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And sadly, <clears throat> can't take up a pyramid in your garage. <laughs> but <laughs> technically, you can sit in a 10 by 10 by 10 tangent cube of science and talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. You can and bitch about how everybody has an agenda, right. even though we can we can sit in here we're and going ca straight to calculate pyramids. the value of straight to pyramid money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're going straight to fucking pyramids with an, an agenda. That's right. Yeah, I mean, like, I I would try to be unbiased, but I'm totally biased. Like, if I was out there digging it up, I'm like aliens or whatever. You know, I'll have my own biases. <laughs> right. You know, uh, but it, but but personally, it's not based on power. It's no, it's going to be based on it's going to be based on mainstream archaeology being wrong about almost everything. <laughs> for me, it's just <laughs> uh, like, and and I'm sure this is the case for for archaeologists in general. Like the the people, <clears throat> they're yeah. fascinated by what there is to discover. Yeah. The problem comes in is like the reason why I'm not a, o over in Mexico digging up pyramids is because I don't have the funding. Right. So if somebody gave me the funding to go dig up pyramids. But they were like, I want you to find this. And if you don't find this, I'm pulling your funding. I'd be like, okay, uh, yeah, I'll go find that. Right. Go prove that crystal skulls were built in Teotihuacan. <clears throat> right. So uh, I'd be like, hell yes, I'm going to find that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm going to do exactly what you For say. For the rest of my life. I promise you that I will find exactly what you want me to find. Yeah. Give me the money. Yeah. And then I would go dig up pyramids. And when I found evidence that was against what they were paying me to, you know, the that yeah. I knew, I find this evidence, and I know I'm going to lose my funding if I publish it. Yeah, I'm not going to publish it. Yep. So you go find I'm that, gonna, you go find that rug. I'm going to write about it. Bring a broom. I'm going to write about <laughs> it secretly. Right. In your not publish it. Non-published memoirs. And yeah. then maybe when I find evidence that sort of possibly discover like like not discover but supports but their supports their ideas. Like yeah, it looks like something was drug out of here. <laughs> I publish that. Yeah. I'd make that it's comment. Terrible. It's terrible. The, but the, it's, <laughs> this is like your idea that maybe they're, this is what they're doing. They're yeah. just towing the line. Yeah. I think it's terrible, but I mean like it is the terrible, work has to get but, done somehow. But somebody has to pay for it. And, and if people are paying for it for their own power, like at least you get to dig up pyramids and <laughs> then when you die, maybe your journals will. We just need to all come together and like not use money. <laughs> 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 but so <clears throat> nowadays with the internet, you know, you could set it up to where all of your secret journals of the real shit that you actually found that you never published, you, you know, you do They're a dead, dead man you switch, dead man switch <laughs> yeah. it, right? Yeah. You That's kill me, I'm going to tell do. everybody the real deal. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, the real deal is we got to take a break. That's one of the real deals right now. So this is a fascinating topic though. I think we'll finish out the show the next time we on this, yeah. continue on this, talking about conspiracies and dead snake switch that's right that's why it's called history his story <laughs> as in the king Ow! yeah <laughs> as in the king it's his story oh yeah, yeah. gotcha snakes Like one and I don't even know why I do intros. <laughs> like why am I doing intros? 
Uh, Welcome back to Snake Bros. Brothers of the Serpent. Tip 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 of science from half a pyramid's time behind our backs. Ancient demons, monsters, and serpents, and script hearts. 30% brain expansion. Intro complete. Talking about pyramids and gods and devils and government conspiracies and fucking. Damn it. Follow the money until. It gets until too we all, ancient until we for all us to understand it. To come together and stop using money. <laughs> <laughs> follow, f- follow the giant donut-shaped rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it always leads you to the path. That's right. Tells you what. Yeah. Anyway, look up the giant donut-shaped yeah, rocks. Enormous coins of stone. No one can even pick them up. They're just out in a big field. Right. It's like, it's, okay. It's, it's the epitome of... I'm going to give you this chair, <laughs> and you're going to give me that freaking shirt. And... and no, we'll, wait. No, no, wait. <laughs> I'm going to give you this chair, and you're going to give me ownership of that massive donut-shaped rock out in the field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why Bitcoins are better, because you can kind of divide them up. <laughs> <laughs> like you have to buy something like that's you, worth that entire. I'm gonna stone. go out there and draw a line through half of my donut shaped rock <laughs> for that. You'll chair. own that that side, yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll mark off a corner for you to have for that apple. Yeah, so <laughs> follow it. Follow. <laughs> they they couldn't have done. It must have been really difficult back then. You know, they probably thought the whole follow the money was a joke. It just sits there <laughs> in the field. <laughs> what do you mean follow the money? <laughs> yeah, you just go up and you stand in front of this donut shaped rock and you're like. Yeah, the way you follow the money is you're like, it was this guy's, and then it was this guy's, and then it was this guy's, and then it was this guy's. If, if you kept records of who owned the donut-shaped rock, then you could pretty much figure out yeah, what, was going what on. the fuck was going yeah. on. That's right. Anyway. So, and it's, it's, this is about money in an abstract way, in terms of maintaining power structures or whatever. Like, it's not about money directly, like... You know, like well, I think we were cracking a joke recently in, in one of the most recent shows where you were you were sort of joking on how you know archaeologists won't ever dig stuff up because they don't have the funding, right? And they're like, we don't have yeah, the funding, yeah. and I was like, I guarantee you the funding is beneath that pyramid, you know, yeah. like whatever the treasure is down there. So it's well, not that one. That was kind of Ty's point, right? Maybe yeah. that that like they they're looking for the loot, right? And I mean, you can imagine that, like you you if you like broke into a room that was just full of of artifacts that you could pocket a couple of them and nobody would ever know and you'd be a millionaire, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't think that that's what's happening necessarily. I don't think that I'm not accusing archaeologists of stealing from their sites. No. I'm sure it does happen and people try, but the point is, is that the point that you are making is that it's, it's, it is about the money, but it's deeper than the loot. That's right. Uh, that is the point. Because really the loot, if you're not a looter, the loot is artifacts. Like to archaeologists, right. the loot is, is data. It represents information that they need to skew and hide and, you know, that kind of right. shit. Right, and, the, and the, really <laughs> the, the power is in information. Yeah. That's why I have Bitcoins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bitcoins are money made out of data. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Don't tell everyone. <laughs> but yeah, everybody should buy Bitcoin. I'm going to do it right now. That's right. It's going to go up. <laughs> sell this, and then I'm going to sell First it. insider trading. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'm going to jail. That's right. But I'm going to buy a bunch of Bitcoin first. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never find my wallet. Roll that. I, I am fascinated by this. paper buried in the backyard. I'm fascinated by the subject of Bitcoins. Uh, this is way getting off the subject. But Let's yeah. not get off the subject. Let's go back. Yeah. <laughs> but Bitcoins are kind of like that big rock in the, out in the field. You know, it's, it's inaccessible in terms of functional money, but it still was used for a long time as functional money. All you had to do was own it. <laughs> so what's the name of this place? Brett wants a typed spelling. We're we were trying to do research on a site. A uh, typed spelling? No, Brett. I've I've <laughs> said it twice. <laughs> I can't type. Hey Google, it won't type for me. It's Huayatlico. H U E. Hold on, I gotta bring it up here. Uh, make sure I get it right. H U A T L. Right? Is that in there? H U. H U E Y A T L A C O. Huayatlico. It has. It has atl in it. Yes, it does. Atl, atl, atl. Yeah. Yep. Are you typing it? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah L A C O. L A C O. A C O. There you go. Huayatlico. So, Huayatlico is a site in Mexico. Um, 
Uh, it's near the city of Puebla. Uh, in the 1960s, there was a there was a dig there, and they discovered a kind of a, a you know a, an ancient camp. Okay, it was an ancient campsite of of ancient humans, and they were finding you uh, by by and unifacial t- stone tools there. Um, which if, if anybody doesn't know, like a, a bifacial is like, like your classic arrowhead. It's got it's worked on both sides of the stone. A unifacial is just it's just worked on one side. Right. Usually they'll make some kind of scraper or blade or whatever. Um, <clears throat> the problem with the site was that when they were doing the, when they were getting the various people there to do dating, they, the, the, okay. The carbon dating didn't work, which is the first indication that it's really old because carbon is half like, you know, 60,000 years and it's, that's it. Yeah. If it's older than that, you can't really do carbon dating. Um, so they were getting, um, what do they call them? Uh, geochronologists, which is basically a catch-all term for anybody who can use anything to date geological strata, because that's what they had to do. They had to. Yeah. So they got a um, they got a person there who d- did dating by. Uh, shit, the term is escaping me. What are the little crystal? The little single-celled bacteria that grow crystal shells? Uh, diatom. Diatoms, yeah. So. Uh, Diatomic dating, which is basically like the, we have these single-celled life forms that where each species or each yeah each species in the in the uh, uh, will will grow crystal shells around themselves like these impermeable sp- spaceships right of crystal, and each species has a unique crystal shape that it grows right and they're they're freaking beautiful but yeah they're, they're gorgeous. the designs are just there's millions of them yeah but each species will grow a unique form of crystal. And so you can kind of look and see, like you, you got all these different crystal shapes in the diatoms and you can look at them and, and sort of identify them by their shapes and say, okay, so we know that that one has been around this long or, you know, this, it is somewhat circular in the sense like, well, you, how do you know that they were around for a hundred right. million well, years? Well, they, they, because they've done enough excavations and, and, and tested enough, they, they, they've, you know, in enough different layers of, of sedimentary rock and whatever. Yeah. They found consistent, pretty consistently that this specific crystal shape is in this layer. Yes. This other crystal shape is in this other layer, and through right. various different methods of geologic dating, they've they've found that like okay, so right. this time pl- this timeline. So if you find this diatom in a river basin somewhere, they can pretty much say like okay that. You know that they that died diatom. out two hundred million years ago, or right. two, two two million years ago, or whatever. And yeah, yeah. Uh, but if it's a river basin, they could have washed down. Right. Yeah. So there's all this. There's you look at the diatoms, and then you have to consider the site itself, and then and there's a whole bunch of logic that goes in because you you right. basically construct a picture. So we have all these different species, and then we have each species has they're either extant, they they still exist now, or they they're extinct, and we have a known time period where they existed, and we try to figure out how did they all get here. Yeah, and what does that tell us about the site itself? So that's what they were doing because the the place where they were excavating was also, I think it was nearby an ancient riverbed, and there was also a lava flow associated with it. So so, the site itself was beneath the uh, the layer of ash from this volcanic eruption, which they were able to pretty precisely, according to you know dating science, whatever they were pretty uh, pretty precisely able to pinpoint the eruption time. Yeah. As being 250,000 250, years ago, which puts the site itself, the stuff below it, at that order older, right? It has to be at least 250,000 years old. Any evidence of humans in the Americas that early is just not accepted. Like, just... Right. It's it's getting closer now to being accepted. There are a couple of sites that have pushed it back 110 or 112,000 years but 250,000 years, especially down in Mexico. So, like, the, the other thing you have to remember about the, 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 the standard model idea of the population of the Americas comes across the Bering Strait in Alaska. That's right. the only entry point. Right. So that should say that, like... North! <laughs> right. So that, so that implies that, that, that people will spread out through the Americas down there, and, like, the people who arrive all the way at the southern tip of South America are going to... That's going to be the most recent... Right, because they right. they had to walk there from Alaska, right? So they, they get there. That's that's the most recent. So 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 the idea is like as you're going down through the Americas from Alaska down south, you find younger and younger 
earliest times. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're down in deep in deep Mexico and you find something 250,000 years old, it's just not. It's not gonna. They're not gonna accept it. <clears throat> right. Now let's see. Yeah. So there was the uranium hydrogen uh, the uranium thorium dating they did on this. Yeah. Gave 260 plus 260,000 plus or minus. 60,000 years and zircon fission track dating of volcanic ash said 370,000 years plus or minus 240,000 years that's pretty <laughs> pretty vague yeah <laughs> and then some of the some of the dating stuff gave up to 600,000 to 800,000 years as far as i remember i think that was the hydrogen helium thorium stuff or whatever but that was the deal where they had to hire the physicist like who's like a brilliant physicist and he doesn't give yeah, a fuck yeah. about archaeology or whatever and he's just he, he's built this machine to do this kind of dating and so he does it or whatever and he tells them and they're like that's not possible and he's like uh it's based on well ex very accepted physics <laughs> like i'm sorry that it doesn't fit your story but that's how old it is <laughs> 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 which is why they don't at, like to ask physicists to date stuff uh, <clears throat> yeah so brett's saying that the when the findings were announced people attacked it as irresponsible due to the wide range of error only at the widest error, it is still 130 fucking thousand years old. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's way too old. So Huatlico uh, became an extremely controversial site. Uh, and then a whole bunch of shenanigans go along with it. Artifacts disappearing, people, you know, uh, governments trying to restrict access. Um, and eventually they covered the entire place over in gravel. And then they eventually built a, they, they built a, Somewhere upstream, they built a dam and flooded the entire area. Now it's all under a lake, a man-made lake. I mean, it's just ridiculous oh the, the lengths they went to to keep it from fucking from being uh, looked at again. You know, especially as as time went on from the '60s when we got better technology and stuff. And there was a there was a like a Texas oil baron. Like baron is a is a bad word to use, but he was a he was a wealthy guy from and he was wealthy from the oil industry. And he kind of got interested in stuff like this. He kind of at the near the end of his life he sort of he would get he liked to sort of find things like this that had never been completed you know and then just throw money at it and try to get it fixed try to finish it yeah and so he took on the Hoyatlico site he was like he's like let's figure this out and so he just started he started you know reaching out getting getting uh archaeologists and various other professionals and everything and and saying, go down there and figure this out. Can we get a team out there? Can we, you know, can we find the old samples? Can we, you know, can we do new, new dating types on these old samples that they, because they took core samples. You know, he's like, where are the, so they, so they started to go down there and find all this shit out. And like the one dude he sent to look for the artifacts, because there was a whole huge box, you know, an enormous number of bifacials and unifacials that they had found. And he was trying to find them. And he eventually tracked them to an unmarked, Warehouse. It's very Indiana Jones, like an unmarked warehouse off on a dirt road full of boxes that are also unmarked. <laughs> and he spent like, you know, he spent a week going through that, that the boxes in there until he finally found the one that had the Huatlico artifacts in it. And they were like half gone. And a bunch of them were broken, you know. Anyway, uh, so there's just there was just an enormous amount of resistance to anybody going back to the site. And and consider that no human remains were found here. It was just the tools. Yeah. Where where is this? It's a, it's in Mexico. Okay. I mean, I know that's a huge area, but Yeah. So, Puebla, the city of Puebla. I think I I thought it was deep south of Mexico, I'm not sure. Uh what's he saying here? Evidence outlined here consistently indicates that the Huatlico site is about 250,000 years old. We who have worked on geological aspects of the Vasquillo area are painfully aware that so great an age poses an archaeological dilemma. In our view, the results reported here widen the window of time in which serious investigation of the age of man in the new world would be warranted. We continue to cast a critical eye on all the data, including our own. Yeah, that's that's the report published by the, the head archaeologist, who also was a woman at, at the time. That was controversial as well. So a lot of... A lot of and that was in 1981. Yeah, yeah. But in the 60s, the original dig was it was being head by a woman. A lot of the skirptards just used that. Okay, so it's 70 miles southeast of Mexico City. Okay, so that's not that which far Which is south. Teotihuacan. Like, like Teotihuacan, 70, 70 miles away from that. Yeah. So we're not too far away. Yeah, yeah. And it's... <clears throat> but it's just a, the, the, whole, the whole site is an excellent, an excellent example of somebody 
getting their panties in a wad because this destroys the narrative. And then, yeah. and then they're doing all this crap from the background. You don't ever see them. You don't ever, nobody ever finds out who it is, but somebody is manipulating things from the outskirts trying to get this stopped. So what did they do? They they freaking built a dam somewhere and just flooded. Yeah, the first the first they first they like went along and and like and there's no no warning of this. It's just like the people go down there to look at the site and it's just completely been fucked with. The first time they they went along and they dug this, they sort of cleared out this cliff along it and then they put gravel all over the place. They basically just completely destroyed the site with gravel and oh and, and earth movers. And then later on, they built a a dam and made, basically made an enormous man-made lake that filled, that flooded the whole area. So it's now it's and underwater. And this was before the guy, the the oil guy, or this is after the oil guy. This was is trying during. Figured out. Dur- uh. Uh. Yeah. Great example. Now I'm pissed. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it was a great example. <laughs> and the, what's really what's really terrible though is that. The, some of the tactics used by whoever these people are, wh- whoever, whatever they are that the, the, that are that are sort of doing the machinations in the background to try to get this stuff stopped, they use this. They use these like incredibly caustic, like media, you know, uh, drives but where they're they're just trashing people. It's, uh, it's ad hominem nonstop, you know, where they're just basically talking shit about the people involved. Right. Like one of the big things that they used in the 60s was that it was a woman heading the, you know, like, I mean, like it's it sounds all social justice bullshit today when people because of because of what has happened. But it, it isn't like you read it back then. And they were just misogynizing the crap out of it because that was one way that they thought they could delegitimize the, the, the data oh my God. just by it was like, oh, it's a woman. Of course, you know, it's going to be all fucking wrong or whatever. It's like it's just and it's, it's weird because it's like they're not even misogynists. They just want to destroy the data. Yeah, they'll be whatever they need right, to be right. to destroy the and data. And they think, and they know that there are some people out there that are misogynists who will fall for this, right? Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's terrible. So like, the 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 um, the Anybody special. want to go scuba diving? <laughs> yeah, with a shovel. Yeah, <laughs> I love hunting arrowheads. That's basically <laughs> what they were. Uh, the the geochronologist who uh, went out there to do the. Uh, um, she got crystal samples and other stuff for the, the hydrogen and helium thorium dating and stuff. She was never able to work in her field again. And that was the first job she took out of university. Think of that. She got her PhD and basically this, the ability to date stuff, you know, geological strata. The first job she gets is to date this shit. And she has never been able to work in her field again since then. Oh my God. Because she, you know, and she was like, she was, I've seen interviews with her. See that, that type of stuff, like that ought to appeal to people today. Yeah, it should. Yep. Like that that needs to be looked at again. Right. <laughs> yep. I mean it's just it's the, the the injustice of it is 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 ridiculous, you know. Yeah, but that that's not the only place. I mean, that's a great example, but the the same thing happens everywhere. Uh, everywhere uh, with these We went through it sites. with Malta, like yeah, hiding teeth, swapping shit out, erasing things off the walls, you know. I mean, it's just like it, it, the, you can't, you can't look at any of this stuff and like, what was, uh, I was, I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts, which is, uh, uh, Skeptico the other day yeah. and he's got, he, he, he calls this the Skeptico path, right? The, 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 the three things he does. He's like, first you follow the data wherever it leads, right? When you get there, look for the conspiracy because there is going to be one. <laughs> that's badass yeah and then once you've determined the nature of this of the conspiracy so that you will not be confused by the stuff that the conspiracy is throwing into the picture then you look for the spiritual connection because there is going to be one huh it's really cool <laughs> yeah so that that throws, spiritual in terms of consciousness yeah, yeah but that throws an interesting loop on it like 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 what we were talking about before like if it was if it was proven beyond a shadow of a doubt, like there was just no doubt that the aliens yeah. have the intelligent life has been visiting this planet right. for thousands of years. Like what would it do to the idea of racism? Yeah. Period. Like it's just like, yeah, you learn a giant bugs and visiting us. And you're like, well, yeah. So the idea that we're ridiculous. different. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. It, it completely erases that. And that's an enormous tool for the elite to use. Yeah. They don't want to lose that one. Yep. 
As I said, several different teams of or individual archaeologists verified the protocols used and approved of the methods used at the site, repeatedly saying that it was properly. Yeah, I, I remember that 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 large numbers of experts who just who just looked at the methods used could not find any fault in the method in the methodology of the people working there. But nevertheless, endless articles, shows, reports that were just skirp derping everything and not do, not doing any science, just and it, full of fallacies, you know. Yeah. So, so that's what we're up against. Like all of this stuff that we talk about, the, all of these ancient sites that are, uh, in many cases, just not even paid attention to anymore. Right. You know, they, they, they go there, who, whoever is behind the conspiracies or whatever, you know, run, they, they, they decide what it is. They know what it is already without yep. even looking at it. I think, it's happening, for example, I think that's happening to Gobekli Tepe right now. They're never going to do any more excavations there. I'm not saying anybody killed Klaus Schmidt, but like, that's done. Like, they're not going to, they're not yeah. going to excavate more. They put a massive roof over it, so you right. can't even look at it with Google Earth. Right. They've already got the picture out. They've they've published the the National Geographic with the the paint the artist depictions of like butt flat people walking around. You know, I mean, it's yeah. like they, it, they're done describing the site as being basically an anomalous megalithic site built by butt flaps. Yeah. <laughs> End of story. Yeah. Moving on. And that's why they don't want any more work done there, because that the story will stand if they just leave it alone. Yeah. That was what I, I was talking about this a couple of episodes back, like the in, in Forbidden Archaeology. Like they were having this massive debate over the the, the evolution of, yeah. of modern man. And there was a there was a very legitimate team of scientists with a head archaeologist or a paleontologist or whatever who had discovered some like in, in the methods that they used and everything was so meticulous. They invited people to the site to, yeah. to watch them excavate things. There was nothing that they could attack. And th what they were digging up totally wiped out the prevailing theory of the time, which is still the theory of today. Yeah. The out of Africa, all, all that stuff that the whole timeline. Yep. And there was like, there was this ongoing debate in the public forum and the winning side which was not the side that had the truth behind them, realized that what they the, the best tactic was to just not address just, it at all. Not yeah. address it at all. And after a while, because they kept making new discoveries because they had the money behind them. Yeah. And this other guy had been losing all of his funding and their whole project was over. That was like, as long as we don't address that and we keep making these new discoveries that fit our paradigm, it'll just go away. Yeah. And it did. Yep. So yeah, that's that's a a kind of insidious sort of tactical form of in, of confirmation bias where you do it on purpose. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 the number one propaganda tactic, which yeah. is just don't only address it. Yeah, yeah, don't address any information that challenges your theory. Right? Did you see that Zahi Hawass thing where he flips out on Graham Hancock? Yes, he, that was what that was. And the, where he flips out on, yeah, he flips out on Graham Hancock. Because there's a Robert picture of Robert Bavall. Bavall. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a picture of Robert, Robert Bavall on, on Graham Hancock's laptop when they were coming here to do this debate that had been planned for years. And Zahi Hawass just, I mean, there's video, you can see the video on YouTube. He flips out. He was the head of the Egyptian Antiquities. Yeah, the, the Ministry of Antiquities or whatever. They have some grandiose name for it. I can't remember what it is. But yeah, he was the he basically if you wanted to do any kind of archaeology in Egypt, you had to go through him and bring him German horse because that's what he wanted. Blonde German horse. <laughs> Remember that story from, from uh, Von Daniken? Like, wh wh why do we need the, the, the blonde? <laughs> 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 they had to bring him a blonde like German, co uh, you know, consort or whatever. Like they they brought her into his office and he like just goes towards her and they, they're like, can we get the permits now? He's like, yes, 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 go get out of here. You know, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's terrible, but that's basically what it is. Like he had to, he wasn't, he wasn't an archaeologist. Yeah. And there's a whole weird story behind him too with the Association for Psychical Research, the the people who, the, Ed, the Edgar Casey Foundation. That is a strange rabbit hole right there. Yeah. Like they got Zahi Hawass his degree. They they paid for him to come to the Americas, to the United States, to go to the University of Pennsylvania to get his degree in archaeology and Egyptology, so that he could go back to Egypt and become the head of the Ministry of Antiquities there, and then sort of be an open door for them 
Instead, he went there and slammed the door in their faces. Yeah. After they paid for his degree. And it's fucking weird. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. It's a very strange story. But he's gone now. And yeah, because he was a, he was part of the Mubarak regime, and when they got ousted. Oh, okay. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. And there was like some crazy shit going on there, like at that time. Yeah. Like during the Arab Spring, when like there was threats to like blow up the pyramids and all. Yeah. This kind of well, crazy and, the, shit. and the, the the museum of Cairo got looted, emptied out. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. This is so. This is fucking real shit. Yeah, dude. Like. He who controls the past controls the present, and he who controls the present controls the future. That's what it's about. That's what it comes down to, is control. And show me the money. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's the thing about power and money? Like, you get to a certain point. You like power and money? <laughs> we should hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Uh, just idiocracy yeah okay. but, but it was it was it was women oh <laughs> well you like chicks and money <laughs> we should, we should hang, hang out, out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's basically the way they are like, yeah I was like oh yeah you know we're, we, we're gonna be friends as long as it suits me yeah for exactly. power and money yeah walk around with their narcissistics <laughs> <laughs> But like, there's a there's the concept of like, once you get to a certain point, power and money are the same thing. Like, yeah, yeah. You have power, you have money, you know, or vice versa. Right. So. Um, but like you said, only so far. Like, you have money, you can only have so much. There's power. there 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 are amounts of wealth that cannot be reached without power. Yeah, that's true. Yes. So if you have that kind of wealth, the power is, is yeah, yeah. Comes, yeah, is there too. Um, like I remember, you know, there, there's, there's, this happens like throughout history where the, the, the elites are living in this ridiculous opulence while people are starving all around them. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and, th and, they, and yet they can still command like the, the adulation of the people, you know, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm going to save you. And they're all like, yay. And he's got like, he fucking is lounging in a, in a garden with peacocks and shit, you know, and they're all starving. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't understand how that works. I just don't understand, but you know, that, that may be, I've read some stuff where people are writing about Americans and how they're like that. They just don't, the Americans are like, <laughs> they don't understand the whole aristocracy slash nobility yeah. thing. You know, Americans have this idea like that. I'm, you know, I'm just as good as anybody, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's true. But like, you know, if you go to the old world or whatever, that's, that's not the case even today. Yeah. Like, if you were, if you're in a noble family, you're. You're better, you know? Yeah. You're blue bloods. What has blue blood? Reptiles. <laughs> but this is like the, the reason why I, I think like all of this stuff that we've been talking about, about the power structure and about the, this control over this thing, this is why it's important for right now in our time, we have this ability to, and, and the freedom here to, so far. <laughs> yes, so far. So far, so, so okay. Yeah. Decent enough. Yeah. Right? Past performance is not uh, indicative but, of future but performance. But to get into this kind of stuff, so like you, the, the whole, this may sound silly, but the, the ancient aliens sort of culture, yeah. right? The All of these amateur archaeologists going all over the place, looking at shit, writing books. Asking like, questions. Asking questions, yes. And then putting it in the public forum, like yeah. getting involved in, in, the, in the debate. Um, Using anecdotal evidence, you know, what you find around where you live. Right. And taking pictures, like good freaking pictures and video, uh, documenting stuff as yes. best you can and putting it into the public forum for other people who have, who have, you just never know. Like you may look at something and you're like, you know, well, maybe that could be, you know, take the multiverse. Yeah. Like concept, like. Maybe in one universe, this is actually the remnants of some ancient structure, and you yeah. photograph it, you, you, you pay close attention to it, you look at it, you put it online, and someone else, somewhere else in the Find world, some other piece of information. has a piece of information that fits with that. Yeah, and that's we, happened we, so many times. Yeah. We have the ability 
all of us right now with 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 the, the advent it, of the internet, it's the age of Aquarius, He's dumping information on us all yeah, the time. Yeah, we have the ability to to truly discover things without you know, having to get this massive amount of funding and travel all over the world. And view, spend... Yeah. View it through the lens of, of institutions of power. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, and that, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing this. And the, 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 the last thing I would tie into it is, is the brotherhood of the serpent. Yes. That institution, whatever it was when it began is in, in, in our idea of it was the, was pure in the sense that it was about the dissemination of truth. The dissemination of truth. And it got corrupted just the same way that all of this stuff gets corrupted. Yeah. <clears throat> because once once you have something like that, you are bound to get attention yeah. from people who seek power. The abyss looks back. That's right. And so they eventually they they infiltrate in ways that you cannot expect. Right. You know, unless you're your fucking Sun Tzu yeah. <laughs> forever. Uh, yeah. And they, they get into it and they, they manipulate it in such a way that it benefits them only. Yep. Yep. Uh, so, the so it, is, it, it's in the spirit of, of the brotherhood of the serpent. Yes. That we do this and, and this, these, the, the brotherhood throughout the ages has been corrupt, but it's in the spirit of their original charter that we right. do this. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and these examples that we've given are, like to me, that like, like, dude, this is badass. Like, these are excellent examples of how of the reason why it is so important for just everyday people to pay attention to this kind of shit. Right. Dude. So basically, what we're saying is like, you need to think about pyramids all the time. Yeah. Just fucking think about any pyramids. chance you get, bring up pyramids in a conversation, <laughs> and then go go on to Google Play and give us five stars so that we have power. That's right. To look for pyramids. Give us power. <laughs> <laughs> And then you can tell us we suck on the blog. That's right. You t- on the on the blog, you can tell us we're we're lame. We don't have any power. But in the iTunes store, power, <laughs> power up. <laughs> <Do-do-do-do-do>. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Holy shit. And send us bitcoins, says Brett. <laughs> yes. More power. Yeah. <laughs> if you would like to donate some bitcoins, that's right. Send it to one 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 four five six seven four fifteen. I have, a, wait, I have a Bitcoin wallet address. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so I uh, want to go ahead and thank uh, Laura for the intros. And thank the official program observer, Brett, for yes, officially you, Brett. observing the program and giving us great, great input. We're, we're working this system out. And it's gonna, It'll get smoother, but uh, so far this is badass. Um, and thanks to Aetherim Studios, AWACS Productions, RK Enterprises, and you guys can contact us at uh, brothersoftheserpent.blogspot.com. You can go there to comment. Uh, you can go to, or you can send us emails at brothersoftheserpent at gmail.com. And I want to thank you, all you guys, for listening. And all of you people way in the future that are also listening, probably. Yeah. <laughs> we shall become snakes in the future. <laughs> I could be a really old man right now that you're listening to this because this will be on the internet forever. I might, I might be 90 years old and you're listening to this old podcast. Thanks to you guys, too. Yeah. Multiverse guy? That's right. Pulling that trigger. That's right. Keep pulling that trigger, bro. <laughs> One day, you'll still not prove it. Yeah, make it possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, remember, Adamu, think about pyramids. <laughs> and snakes.